beat Hopkins on the final day and lost to Providence on the opening game, and then losing to West Des Moines Valley, 55-42 Tuesday night. So the Maroons uh, got to get got to right the ship. Kind of happened last year. Uh, defense probably wasn't the best. Offense certainly wasn't the best. They shot 40% from the field against Valley, and as you mentioned. Uh, they shot 68% from the free throw line, but they just didn't get there enough. So what has to change tonight as we uh, match this up before we go to our first break? Uh, uh, Scott Babinette, Dowling, and Ankeny Centennial. What do the Maroons got to write? How do they have to write the ship tonight? Well, first off, they're shooting in every, every measurable is down from last year and what they would expect as a team. So a lot of that, like last year when they played Centennial, they get down the lane lining, and Centennial would suck in and stop the drive, and they kick for wide open threes. So you got to look for that. They like to shoot the three. Uh, the other night, I thought they got rushed. I saw the game tape later and just seemed a little rushed. You'd see a lot of possessions with no passes or one pass and a shot going up, but you get behind, you start forcing a little bit. So they just got to get into their sets. They've got to anticipate Ankeny Centennial will jam them on the dribble handoffs, and uh, they may need to slip a few screens when they set on ball screens tonight. Some other games going on tonight before we go to our first break. Ankeny, or rather, Ankeny on the road at Johnston, and in the girls' contest, it's number eight, Ankeny, and number one, Johnston. It's Waukee Northwest at Valley. In the boys' matchup, that's a rematch of the state championship game. And Waukee is at Southeast Polk. That game will be uh, televised on CISN, as our game will be. They'll be joining us here shortly, the CISN group, so we will be simulcasting the Dowling-Ankeny Centennial game with CISN, but uh, Waukee at Southeast Polk. Uh, strictly on CISN. And then Marshalltown is at Urbandale in a non-division game. Marshalltown out of the Iowa Alliance. Other games going on in the Iowa Alliance tonight. North is at Roosevelt. East is at Lincoln. Otomo at Hoover. Ames at Fort Dodge. And Mesa City at Waterloo East. Tomorrow the Dowling boys will be in action. We'll talk more about that. Dowling will be hosting Roosevelt and a freshman, sophomore, and varsity games beginning at 10.30 tomorrow morning here at the Dowling Gym. It's uh, boys only with Roosevelt beginning tomorrow. The varsity game begins at noon. We will not have radio for that tomorrow. So we're going to take a break. Alongside Scott Babinat, I'm Mark Amadale. It's Dowling and Ankeny Centennial, a first Friday night of the high school basketball season. And we'll be back with more pregame and starting lineups when we return. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Uh, we say hi to them uh, down in Arizona, Texas. Is 178 wins, 58 losses. Overall, Scott's been the head coach at 35 years, 703 wins, 177 losses. He's assisted by Dave Runchy, Rachel Hinder-Schmidt, Andy Fain, and Denny Albertson. And the uh, Jags will start this lineup at one guard, Ava Martin, a 5'6 junior, averaging 9.5 points. She'll wear number one. The other guard is Maya Crawford, 5'8 junior, averaging 14.7 rebounds, leads the team in both categories. She'll wear number five. And the third guard is Tilly Smith. 5'5", five, five, junior, averaging 8.5 points, leads the team with 8 made 3, show award number 23. The one forward, Jaden Pratt, returning starter from last year, 5'10", junior, averaging 9.5 points, show award number 4. And the other forward is Finley Blackmore, 5'10", 
5'11", junior, averaging eight and a half points, second on the team with made threes with six, and she'll wear number 14. So it'll be Pratt, Crawford, Blackmore, Smith, and Martin, the five that start for Ankeny Centennial. They come in averaging 64 points on offense, give up 30 points on defense. Their record is 3-0. They're ranked second in Class 5A, according to the rankings that came out the other day, and last year they went 18-7. and seven. They lost to Johnson in the semifinals of the state basketball tournament. For Dowling Catholic, there are normal starters that they started Tuesday night. At one guard, Katie Moeller. The other guard is Ava Zedeker. And the th third guard is Layla Trenton, along with Ellie Moeller in the post and Ellie Olson at forward. The Maroons come in with a record of 1-2 and two on the season. We'll take a break, and we come back. We'll have the tip-off between Dowling and Ankeny Centennial, but first a word from uh, Dr. Dan Ryan, the president of Dowling Catholic High School, and our pregame prayer with Father Reed Flood. It's Dowling and Ankeny Centennial coming up here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Our year-end sales event is going on now at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Now through the end of the year, every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. 2.9% for 72 months on new F-150s. New Bronco Sports and Escapes, both with $1,500 rebate, plus 2.9% APR for 66 months. And save big on the new Mustang Mach-E and 2024 Edge. No payments for 90 days. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Ford Indianola. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Catholic and Ankeny Centennial. Again, last year, Dowling swept the series. They won both games at Dowling and at Centennial. The Maroons lead the series 8-6 to six in girls' play. Uh, Centennial, first time they uh, were established was back in 2014. So the Maroons are ahead in that series. And I mentioned the Dowling starters, Ava Zedeker, Katie Muller, and Layla Tritton, the three guards along with Ellie Olson and Ellie Muller in the post. Off the bench for Dowling, Macy Harnden, number 33, and Leah Brauch, number three, are set to uh, be in. And uh, we're underway, our officials, Tim Oosterhaus, Bryant Abel, and Ben Miles, our three-man officiating crew. Dowling going right to left. We're in their home white uniforms, maroon numbers and trim. Jaguars, and they're all black with the silver streak and numbers. And now underneath, Dowling with the ball. Here is a corner three by Moeller, no good, that's Katie Moeller, it's the Moeller sisters on the floor for Dowling. Rebound out to Centennial. Got a good open look there, Scott, initially, but couldn't get it to fall for Dowling. Yeah, they, they got the drive into the lane, which was a big for uh, Coach Meyer. She talks about lane touches all the time. Now, turnover is a ball stolen away by the Maroons, and with it is Ellie Moeller. Ellie goes 6-1 and a sophomore. Centennial. In man-to-man, -man. here's a shot off the glass, no good by Zedeker. Dowling 0 for 2 from the field early, rebound out to Centennial. Jags in the front court. Centennial undefeated at 3-0. They're ranked second in the state. Underneath, a nice shot in the lane, good by Jaden Pratt, one of the veterans for this Centennial team. And she's, she's kind of the heart and soul of that team. They just do a great job, but she's following her leadership on that. 
She's pretty intense and persistent on the defensive end, and there she took it right at Ellie. And Katie Muller gets loose underneath, but her shot hits the underside, or actually the, uh, the pole behind the basket, which is out of bounds. And the turnover back over to Centennial. Now the Jags for three on the right wing, right in front of us. No good by Tilly Smith, who leads the team with eight made threes. Rebound Dowling. Jaguars lead it two to nothing over Dowling. Here at the Dowling Gym, play starting to fill up on a Friday night. We'll have the boys game here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN, so stay tuned for that. Of course, we have a very special halftime guest. We'll talk more about that during the girls' contest. And now here's a steal by Centennial as Ellie Olson had the ball stolen away. Now it's picked up in the backcourt and a layup good by Centennial and Finley Blackmore. And the Jags out to a 4-0 lead over Dowling. And Dowling needs to handle the ball a little bit better. They're just a little loose with it right now. Uh, they're, and they're also going to find other scorers that can uh, help Ava Zedeker because they're going to—they're they know where she's at all the time. Whistle and a foul on Centennial. I think Pratt will pick up the foul. That'll be Jaden Pratt's first foul for Centennial. Katie Muller to the line for two shots. The other night uh, for Dowling in their loss to Valley, Ellie Olson and Layla Tritton did not score. The bulk of the scoring came from Ellie Muller, Ava Zedeker, and Katie Muller. And getting the line mark is so important for this Dowling team because if they're only playing five, maybe five to six, seven players, they this gives them a chance to rest so they can keep their defensive intensity up. All right, Katie Muller at the line. She goes one for two, and our score is four to one. Centennial over Dowling here in the first quarter. Jags with the basketball. Step back by Pratt from the right elbow. Good. Jaden Pratt with four points to lead Centennial. And the Jags out to a five-point lead, 6-1. to one. And now ball knocked out of bounds as Zedeker tried to go to the wing on the far side and was slapped away by Centennial. Jaguars will stay in man-to-man -man defense. And Ruins inbound the ball. And they just have to be patient to get the shot they want. 35 seconds is a long time. Here's Tritton with it. He's cut off on the baseline. Leaves it for Zedeker. Ava trying to go around, and now she does. Gets it over in the wing. This is Katie Muller for three. It's no good. Long rebound out to Dowling. The Maroons retain possession. A brand-new shot clock. It's reset to 35. Zedeker in the lane. Has the ball tipped away, and now she gets it over to Olsen. Back to Zedeker for three. Good. Ava Zedeker, corner three from the left wing. Dowling's first field goal of the night, and it's 6 4 Centennial. Jags down core. Reverse layup by Pratt, no good. Good defense that time by Ellie Muller, and the rebound comes out to Dowling. And now underneath with the ball is Ellie Olson, and she draws a foul. It'll be a non shooting foul out of bounds to Dowling. Foul will be on Maya Crawford, her first. There's a great contest there on the defensive end. Previous offense, uh, Dowling did a great job of uh, Ava Zedeker dri driving, kicking and then replacing when Olsen drove. Zedeker for three, good from the right wing. So she's nailed a three from each wing. And Dowling has retaken the, has taken the lead for the first time tonight at the 445 mark. Dowling seven, Ankeny Centennial six here in the first quarter. Jags with the basketball. This is Crawford with it. Shot no good, rebound Ellie Muller. Runs the other way. Here's Zedeker with it. Gets it out to Olsen, back to Muller. Ellie with it, now to her sister, Katie Muller. Back to Zedeker with 4.20 to play, and Dowling leading by one. Jags stay in the man-to-man -man defense. Dowling works the ball on the baseline to Muller for three. It's no good by Katie Muller in the corner. Rebound Dowling. Katie gets the rebound. It's a second or third offensive board for Dowling. I know, Scott, you're tracking that. That's uh, something to keep an eye on. Maroons can't get the shot to fall, but they're getting offensive boards. And that's important because they're going to make a Centennial play a lot more time on defense. And here's Zedeker underneath. Her shot up and good with the left hand. Ava Zedeker has scored the last eight points for Dowling, and the Maroons lead 9-6. to six. It's important here on the defensive end to keep Centennial. They're averaging 15 offensive rebounds a game, so it's important to keep them off that offensive board as well. Dowling stays man-to-man. -man. Now backing in is Jaden Pratt. Her shot over Ellie Muller, no good. Rebound comes out to Ellie Muller. Outlet pass to Zedeker. She'll pull up for three. Off the mark, no good. Ball slapped around. And Jaden Pratt with the rebound. The 5'10 junior headed to Illinois State next year. 
Underneath, a shot no good by Maya Crawford, who's headed to Drake, by the way. And it's out of bounds to Centennial with our first substitution. That's three, three good uh, contests here at the basket by Ellen Moeller in the last four possessions. Kylan Smith, 5'11", junior in for Ankeny. She wears number 35. And also in there for the Jags is number 24, Lizzie Bean. All right, Dowling stays man-to-man, -man, 14 on the shot clock. Underneath is Crawford, her shot blocked and rebounded by Dowling. Rebounded by Layla Tritton. Runs the running and a reverse layup is no good. Tip no good, out of bounds to Dowling as Ellie Muller was in there battling Kylan Smith. It'll be Dowling basketball with 2.50 remaining in the first quarter. Katie Muller's getting some good opportunities here, just a couple roll-offs, and uh, she settles down, those will fall. I talked to the guys uh, on Tuesday, that being Jimmy Cataldo and Mike Swain, we have the, the new thing, the, the, the foul situation's reset. As uh, Zedeker attacks the glass, her shot up and no good, was blocked with a whistle and a foul on Centennial. Look at Maya Crawford for her second foul, and again, every quarter in high school girls and boys basketball, the fouls are reset, but once you reach five, it's two shots, no more one and one. So this is your first chance to give us your opinion, <laughs> Coach, when you when you see fit as Zedeker's free throw is no good. Well, my first opinion is you got to make your free throws. So. Take <laughs> uh, care of that. You know, I mean, it takes a little drama out of the one and one, you know, or you can get that extra possession if they'll miss it. But uh, uh, I, I like the change. It sets it up a little bit more towards where the college is going and is on the women's side. Zedeker makes the second free throw. She now has nine points. Dowling's lead is four, their largest of the contest. Centennial has led by five in this first quarter. Jags with it in the front court. They go left to right towards the north basket here at Dowling, and they're all black uniforms with silver numbers and letters. And now a pull-up three is no good from the top of the key by Jaden Pratt. Rebound out to Dowling in the first substitution for the Maroons, as they did the other night. Kelly Moeller sitting down. We have, no, it was um, Macy Harnden in. I'm sorry. She Macy had knocked Harnden. down a couple threes the other night, right? Yes, she did. So Harnden in lineup, number 33 for Dowling, a 5'3 junior. Centennial stays in the man-to-man. -man. Here's Zedeker with it. Gets it over the corner. Here's a corner three up. Good! Layla Tritton with her first three points of the week. And it's 13 to 6, Dowling by 7. And that's good patience again for Dowling there. Timeout called by Ankeny Centennial with a minute 55 to go in the first quarter. This will be a 30 second timeout. We will keep it here. Dowling Catholic leading 13 to 6 over the Ankeny Jaguars. Mark Amadale, Scott Babinat tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio. We want to thank the folks from CISN. That includes Randy Nielsen producing the TV side with AJ Laporte and Gavin Ipson doing the camera work here in the Dowling Gym. We want to thank our own Brady Grimm back at the Iowa Catholic Radio studios. And tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Bozen the Florist, Ashworth Vision Clinic, and Construction Professionals. Scott? Yeah, this is an important uh, timeout for Centennial right now because having Crawford sit down, that's she's their leading scorer. They've got to find some offense here. And Dowling needs to keep consistent on defense and go down and keep scoring and, and, and build their lead. Well, both teams, both teams have been to, been to their bench. Lizzie Beam and Kylan Smith for Centennial have checked in, and Macy Harnden has checked in for Dowling. Jaguars have this. Jaden Pratt. It's over on the right side to Lizzie Beam, number 24. Now to Tilly Smith. Back to Lizzie Beam. Jags run their offense. 15 on the shot clock. Ava Martin in there, number one. Leaves it for Pratt. Pratt in the lane. Puts up a shot up, no good, drew the foul, and two shots coming for Pratt. Foul on Dowling. That'll be Dowling's first foul, foul rather, of the first quarter, and that'll be on Katie Muller. And that's a good drive by Jaden Pratt to get to the basket. And it was a good contest, but she did get her on the arm, so, and that's what Centennial wanted out of that timeout. Pratt, a 61% free throw shooter on the year. Hits the first free throw. For Centennial, upcoming games. 
Jaguars have a bye this Friday or this Tuesday night, and then they'll be home against number five Valley in a girl boy doubleheader a week from tonight at the Centennial Gym for Dowling Catholic. Dowling girls play Tuesday at number one Johnston, and we'll have both games on Iowa Catholic Radio. Second free throw, no good by Pratt. She has five points to lead Centennial. It's 13 to seven. Our score, Dowling with the lead. Burns with the basketball. Burns going with the dribble weave. Here's Harnden with it. Gets it over in the corner to Ellie Olson. She's cut off on the baseline. Gets it back to Harnden. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Layla Tritton with it to Zedeker. Eight on the shot clock. Zedeker in the lane. Her shot up goes through traffic. No good. Ball slapped around in the hands of Centennial on the rebound. And that's Lizzie Beam came, coming away with it. Beam dribbles in the front court. Final minute of the first quarter here at the Dowling Gym. Beams lead by six. Jags with the basketball. Here's Blackmore back in with the basketball. Ava Martin with it. Now back to Blackmore. Finley gets it over to Jaden Pratt. Pratt now with nine on the shot clock. Kicks it out to Kylan Smith. She goes down the lane. Shot is blocked out of bounds by Ellie Muller. Muller led Dowling with six blocks against Valley on Tuesday night and gets one more there. Four seconds remaining on the shot clock. 29 seconds left in the first quarter. Centennial win bounds the ball here, Scott. Yeah, the contest here at the defensive end by Dowling has been tremendous, especially by Ellie Muller. Here's Smith with That's Kylan with it to Ava Martin, and the shot clock goes off, and that'll be a shot clock violation. Tremendous defense by the Dowling Catholic defense that time on that possession. Yeah, the, I, I know the other night Coach uh, Meyer was more disappointed in their defensive effort, and they're coming out tonight and, and putting it together a little bit better than what we saw on Tuesday. All right, final 20 seconds. The shot clock is turned off here at the Dowling Gym. The Maroons with the basketball. Here's Ellie Moeller, top of the key. Guarded by Jaden Pratt. They work the ball left wing. Going to run it down. It's under seven seconds now. Here's Zedeker. Ava with it. Kicks it out. Here's a long three by Tritton. It's in and out no good. And we've come to the end of the first quarter here at the Dowling Catholic Gym in West Des Moines. Our score, Dowling Catholic 13. Ankeny Centennial 7 alongside Scott Babinet and I'm Mark Amadil. Number 6 Dowling leading number 2 Ankeny Centennial in Class 5A CIML basketball. We'll be back after these messages on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeYarmid Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Up to $15,000 on new Ram 2500s. Up to $12,500 on new Ram 1500 Laramies. 0% for 72 months on new Ram 1500 Bighorns. Up to $7,000 on the 2023 Durango. And new 2023 Jeep Renegade starting at $26,990. Incredible year-end savings at DeYarmid Automotive Knoxville. Discounts off MSRP. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Just about set for the second quarter as the Maroons lead Centennial 13 to seven. Mark Hemmedale alongside Scott Babinat as we simulcast tonight on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Jaguars have the ball first. Top of the key is Jaden Pratt with it. Over to Avon Martin and that dribble weave. Now Martin trying to get in the lane, she does. Kicks it over in the corner to Beam for three, it's no good. Offensive rebound, Ava Martin. Centennial gets the shot clock reset with the offensive rebound. We'll get our first quarter statistics here from Scott Babinet when we get a moment. Underneath the shot block, blocked by Dowling's Ellie Olson as the reverse lip was no good. Rebound out to the Maroons. Harnden with it as Macy Harnden, the 5'3 junior, gets the second half, second quarter start. Corner three by Zedeker, no good. She'll fake the three, dribbles the lane, layup is no good off the baseline. Underneath Muller, Hurst. 
Put back is no good, and she drew the foul. She'll get two free throws, and Dowling pounding the offensive boards. Fouls on Maya Crawford, and I've got her for three. Three that, fouls on Crawford. That is a big foul right there. Uh, Dowling for the first quarter shot four for 12 from the, from the field, two from the line, two turnovers, 10 rebounds. Uh, for Centennial, they were three for 11 from the field, one for two from the line, and two turnovers with six rebounds. Dowling two of four at the free throw line. Centennial one for two in that first quarter. Moeller hits the first free throw, and that's her first point of the night for Dowling's Ellie Moeller, the 6'1 sophomore. The second one is no good. Rebound cleared out of there by Pratt. So Dowling three of six at the line in the first half. Centennial the other way with the basketball. Now a steal by the Maroons. Katie Moeller with the steal. She dribbles it at half court. Another turnover for the Jags. And the Maroons have been really active with their hands on defense, and that's created problems with, with sight on passes. Jaguars average 11 and a half turnovers a game through three. Dowling averaging 15 and a half turnovers. Here's a corner three. It's no good by Harnden. Ball slapped out of bounds. They're going to give it to Dowling as it was in Ellie Moeller's hands, but she had it stripped away and out of bounds to the Maroons. Substitution for Dowling. Leah Brauch will check in for Harnden. Leah, a 5'4 sophomore, replaces Harnden, a 5'3 junior. The Maroons are rotating that fifth spot. And Dowling's doing to Centennial what Centennial's been doing to other teams. It's pounding the offensive glass. Now Zedeker's three ping pongs off the guy wire, which is a dead ball when the ball hits that. So the basket went through, but it's not going to count. So it'll be dead ball over to Centennial. Doggone guy yeah. wires here. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a few of those for both teams, or for both the Dowling and the opposing teams. Boys and girls teams. <laughs> Have it, just have it uh, not counted. Here's a little baseline shot up and no good. Rebound Dowling and Ellie Moeller. Runes in transition. With it is Ellie Olson. Underneath the Moeller. Her shot up and good. The basket will count. A foul on Centennial. Dowling running the floor very well. That foul will be on Lizzie Beam, her first. And the basket by Moeller is her third point of the night. Yeah, and pushing that ball gets uh, Centennial very uncomfortable. They're not able to set up and play their normal uh, half-court defense where they're very tough. So pushing that ball has uh, given the advantage to Dowling here. All right, Ellie Muller, the 6'1 sophomore, 47% free throw shooter on the air. Free throw, no good. And the rebound cleared out of there by Kylan Smith, who's back in there for Centennial. 16-7 Dowling. Runes with their largest lead of nine here in the first half. Centennial with the Early lead of five back in the first few minutes of the first quarter. All right, here's Pratt with it. Fakes a head fake for three. And then a shot at the free throw line, no good, but Centennial gets the offensive board. That was great hustle by them back to the basket. Dowling didn't get their blockouts from the perimeter very well. Now a long three up and no good. Long rebound out to Centennial on the miss. And now we've got a Foul on one referee and a held ball by the other as the Finley Blackmore missed the three. Now the officials will get together. Fouls on Dowling, and that'll be on Leah Brauch, her first. And this is a problem for Dowling if they don't secure the rebounds because this is a long possessions that the coaching staff's worried about, having to stay down there, use all your energy on the defensive end. So Pratt will throw it in for Centennial right in front of us. As we sit behind the uh, scorer's table and the Dowling bench. Gets inbounds to Lizzie Bean. Back to Finley Blackmore. Inside the Pratt, drives the lane, draws the foul. This is a tremendous possession right now for Centennial as they're doing just what you said, uh, Scott, taking advantage of fouls and offensive boards. Yeah, and that's a problem. When you play that much defense, then they get an open lane to drive and you're, you're the vulnerability on the challenge for that foul. Ellie Moeller picks up the foul. It's her first free throw. At the free throw line is Jaden Pratt, 5'10", junior for the uh, Jaguars. First one up and good. She's just a tremendous competitor. We saw her last year at a state tournament, and she she really gave it her all her heart in that game to try to knock off Johnston in the semis. 
And the second free throw in and out, no good. Offensive rebound, Kylan Smith. Jaguars keep possession. This is a real long possession for the Jags. 5-10 to go, second quarter, Dowling 16. And Ankeny Centennial 8 here at the Dowling Gym tonight. Glad you could join us. First Friday night of the high school girls and boys basketball season where we have a doubleheader. Jags try to move the ball inside. They get it into Pratt. It's knocked away in a foul on Dowling. And they are going to get Layla Tritton for the foul. And Crawford's back in the lineup as well. That's a third team foul on Dowling here in the second quarter. Jaguars with two. And again, double bonus starts with the 15 foul of quarters now. Very identical to the women's college game where they play the quarters in the, the foul scenario. Now fadeaway jumper, Pat, good! Jaden Pratt with a fall away two. That wasn't bad defense on that possession there, or, or that single part of the possession. <laughs> She's got eight points, and it's 16 to 10. Dowling's lead now six. Here's Zedeker with it, and the corner goes to Harnden for three, no good. Weak side rebound comes away, comes out by Kylan Smith, the 5'11 junior for the Jags with the rebound. Down the lane is Pratt. Her shot, Farsi blocked by Ellie Muller and out of bounds to Centennial with 21 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Ankeny Centennial inbounds underneath their own basket here, Scott. And that's the fifth offensive rebound in the first half of this quarter for Centennial. Didn't we say earlier at the end of the first quarter and early in the second quarter, Dowling was doing that. So yes. my how things have changed. Can't wait to hear those stats at halftime. Well, well you might want to wait. <laughs> Centennial with the ball, 10 on the shot clock. This is Pratt, lobs it inside to Smith. She turns, shot blocked by Muller. Ellie with another block, rebound Dowling. Runes in transition. Here's Tritton with it. Back to Zedeker, top of the key. We're under four minutes to play. Corner three by Tritton is no good. And weak side rebound out to Centennial. Here's Ava Martin dribbling in the front court. With it is Tilly Smith for three. It's no good. Ball slapped around. And off the hands of Kylan Smith, out of bounds to Dowling. As Runes now will bring Katie Muller back in, the 5'11 freshman who started the contest, and she'll replace her sister, her older sister, Ellie. So Dowling going without a true post. Yeah, try to draw them out of the lane a little bit more. Here's Zedeker in the front court. Dowling going right to left towards the south basket here at the Dowling Gym. Not a bad crowd for game one. Again, it's a girl boy doubleheader tonight in the CIML. Here's a corner three. It's up and no good. Hits the back iron by Tritton. Offensive rebound Dowling, and the putback is no good by Katie Muller. And a whistle and a loose ball foul on the Maroons. Right now, the Maroons need to work these possessions just a little bit more. They're shooting. They've shot six three-pointers this and, uh, and Macy Harden commits the foul. That's Dowling's fourth foul this quarter. So Centennial will be shooting the double bonus the rest of this quarter on every Dowling foul. Jags working inside, and foul called on Dowling as Pratt was being held by Zedeker, apparently, and I think that's who they're going to get for the foul. Ava will pick up her first foul, and two free throws now for Centennial the rest of the quarter the new high school federation rule for girls and boys first one up and good by Jaden Pratt the irony of this quarter is there's been a lot of action and it's a four to three in the quarter for the Jaguars both free throws good by Jaden Pratt she has 10 points tonight to lead Centennial in scoring tonight's game brought to you in part by Stephens formal wear and Catholic tuition organization now Zedeker takes it to the basket. Her shot up and good and a whistle and a foul on Tilly Smith as a basket will count by Zedeker and a foul on Centennial and Smith. That was a good drive there. Good possession to get back to the line. Finish at the rim. Zedeker with 11 points. She leads Dowling in scoring. And a chance for an and one here. Free throw good. 12 points now for Ava Zedeker to lead all scorers tonight. Under three minutes to play. Second quarter, 19 to 12, Dowling leading Centennial in this top six matchup in Class 5A. J 
Jags with it. Here's Blackmore underneath. Her shot rolls off the rim no good. Offensive or defensive rebound, Macy Harden. Dowling running in the front court. Underneath to Moeller. Her shot up and good. The basket by Ellie will count. And a foul on Centennial. And the Maroons are running the floor. That foul will be on Tilly Smith, her second. And they need to keep doing that, running out on Centennial. Uh, Maya Crawford's in there with three fouls, and they can just attack her area, and, and there's not much she can do unless she wants to get that fourth one. Well, it's free throw, good. She is now two for four at the line at 47% after a year ago, a 72% free throw shooter. Didn't you do free throws with these kids over the summer, Scott? <laughs> I mean, I just... No, they don't ask me around too much anymore. <laughs> Oh, that's why you're in here with me at Media Row. I get it. <laughs> Two and a half to go. Dowling has its largest lead of 10 over Ankeny Centennial. Jags with it. Here's Pratt from the free throw line. Her shot up, no good. Ellie Muller with the rebound. She's having quite a first half. Dribble handoff to Harnden. Macy with it. Dowling running some clock. Here's Katie Muller. It's up to Harnden. 20 on the shot clock. Dowling running their little version of the, the weave. Out to Zedeker. And she'll shoot the three. It's up off the rim, no good. Muller with the offensive glass, and she has the ball tipped away from her, or taken away by Kylan Smith, and a held ball. And it'll be Dowling basketball, I believe. It is. Had a look around the newest member of the uh, scores table. <laughs> Matt Kern sitting in for Todd Crandall tonight here at the Dowling table. And now the Maroons will inbound the ball. This is Layla Tritton out to Zedeker. Back to Zedeker. Dribbles baseline cut off nicely by Ava Martin. 25 on the shot clock because it did reset after the missed shot. Here's Muller. Katie with the shot up. No good. And the rebound out to Jaden Pratt and Centennial with a minute and a half to go here in the second quarter. Dowling 22, Ankeny Centennial 12. Halftime, we'll have Mark Reed. We'll talk CTO Iowa here at halftime, so stay tuned for that. And now shot up and no good, fight for the rebound. And they'll award the ball to Dowling after it was a great hustle that time by Centennial. And that was uh, Maya Crawford getting over there. And she's in back in the game with three fouls. <laughs> right. She's, she took a chance there. <laughs> Dowling needs to step on. The, they've changed the game back in their favor by stopping the offensive rebounds. But uh, that, was a, that was a play that shouldn't have really happened there. Should have been uh, Here's close. Tritton with the ball in the corner to Harden. Harden back out to Katie Muller. Over dribbles baseline, cut off. Now out to Zedeker with 15 on the shot clock. Zedeker loses it, but right in the hands of Muller. Her shot up, no good. And rebound out to Maya Crawford and Centennial. Jags run the floor, and Dowling getting back, and the ball tapped, slapped away by Ellie Muller to be Centennial basketball with 30 on the shot clock, but 39 seconds remaining here in the first half. Katie Muller's getting a lot of good opportunities here. They're just rolling off on her. I think she just calmed down a little bit, get, you know, your freshman year. She spent some time on the bench there uh, earlier, so see how all that goes. Sometimes it just takes that little bit of adjustment. You know, you're playing at home, you want to do well. All right, here's Pratt with it with 30 seconds left in the first half, 15 on the shot clock. Here's Kylan Smith. Hands it off to Pratt. Pratt dribbles baseline. We got a blocking foul called on Zedeker, and Pratt will get two free throws, and that'll be Zedeker's second foul. Yeah, she's probably a half a step behind there to, from getting that charge. But Pratt's an aggressive player, so she goes hard to the basket and draws those two free throws. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by the Catholic Tuition Organization. Offering a great tax benefit for their donors and tuition assistance to qualified families who want to send their kids to Catholic schools. Online, ctoiowa.org. Some guy by the name of Mark Reed, class of 1980, is uh, part of this. He's breathing down your neck right now, Babinette. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 11 points now for Pratt. As she goes one for two at the free throw line. Dowling with the ball. 
Seven seconds remaining. Long three up and good. That's Trenton with her second three of the night. She's got six points. 22-13 Dowling with the lead here at halftime. And uh, how about that well-timed play by the Maroons there, Mr. Babinette? Yeah, this is a good ending to the quarter. Uh, I think it ended up 25-13. So it was a good, uh, good play. Uh, Layla took confidently and finished off with a good ending for the Maroons. All right, we'll take a two-minute break along our network and CISN affiliate line, if you will. Our halftime score, Dowling Catholic 25, Ankeny Centennial 13 here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Mark Hamadale alongside Scott Babinan and the CISN crew. We'll be back in two minutes with our halftime guest, Mark Reed, talking CTO Iowa. And, of course, CISN will have their, uh, their halftime show uh, on, their, on their end, so just keep that in mind. We'll return to the Dowling Gym after these messages. Our year-end sales event is going on now at DeArmin Ford Indianola. Now, through the end of the year, every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. 2.9% for 72 months on new F-150s. New Bronco Sports and Escapes, both with $1,500 rebate, plus 2.9% APR for 66 months. And save big on the new Mustang Mach-E and 2024 Edge. No payments for 90 days. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmin Ford Indianola. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade. With the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. That's the Catholic Tuition Organization. I think Mr. Babinet kind of got that impression when I read that read a little while ago. This is all about what you manage, Mr. Reed, and thank you for taking time. And by the way, it's not a coincidence that he's here tonight, folks. They had a pep rally, and it was a donor pep rally, an appreciation pep rally, and uh, that was a tremendous event up there. I call it the Media Center Library. It was a library. We went to school here, Mark, but uh, you had quite an event there. Yeah, thank you. We did. We had a, uh, oh, over uh, almost 60 people that came tonight, and uh, we uh, got ready for the big game between uh, the girls and the boys uh, <laughs> uh, playing against Ankeny Centennial tonight. And But we were thanking our donors who are supporters of CTO and encouraging them to share the word about what we do. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. What does uh, CTO, we, we hear the spots here in Iowa Catholic right. Radio during the sporting events, right. during John Leonetti's show in the morning. Uh, we hear the spots with CTO, Catholic Tuition Organization. What does that mean, and how do folks get involved if they so choose? Well, we're a, a school tuition organization actually uh, chartered through the state of Iowa. 
There are 12 in the state of Iowa. We, are, we represent the second largest with our enrollment for the 16 schools in the Diocese of Des Moines. And we raise funds to help those kids that uh, need some additional assistance to be able to go to our schools. And um, the families that we work with are 400% of the federal poverty level and below. So they're the f families that need, have the greatest need. Um, and oftentimes those, those families that have to make those hard choices between whether or not they can uh, keep their child in Catholic education or send their child to Catholic education or pay the light bill. So it's, it's kind of an important thing that we're doing. And uh, this year we're able to um, help a record number of kids, uh, over 2,216 kids. So... Well, that's that's a that's a that's a big job, and you're managing all that, right? Well, your little section of it, I should say. Yeah, well, we try anyway. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yes, I manage. I mean, obviously, the schools themselves, uh, uh, the, the schools office does a phenomenal job, and they have record enrollment this year, and that has a lot to do with the new e education savings account, and uh, those are available for families. But not all of our families qualify for ESAs, and so that's one of the reasons why we're still needed more than ever. And what donors don't uh, necessarily know is that uh, they also get a 75% Iowa tax credit for that gift. So if they were to give us, let's say, $1,000, they get $750 back in Iowa tax credits that are, are good for five years. So even if they don't have much uh, taxable income this particular year, uh, they can spread the, those tax credits out over five years and they can take advantage of it. So they, they really get to say where their tax dollars go to. And let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Mark Reed's our guest here at halftime as uh, he is with the Cent uh, Catholic Tuition Organization. Uh, you know, you had a goal of 1.1 million a year ago. I don't know what that is. Well, 1.1 million more a year ago. More a year ago. Yeah, okay. we had we had more tax credits available to us, so we raised our goal. We have a similar goal this year of 4.5 million. Okay, that's what we need yeah. to hear. Yeah, the numbers yeah. have changed. And and quite honestly, um, you know, I want I want everyone out there to know that uh, um, we still need. We have tax credits available, and we still need support. We're still working hard to get to the 4.5 million, but we're quite far far away. Uh, economies played some impact on that this year. And the deadline for that is? is uh, December 31st. Coming up. Uh, yeah. Now, you can go on uh, CTOIOWA.org and donate online, or you can contact us, and uh, we take all sorts of different types of gifts, whether it's uh, securities, cash, uh, grain. If you're a farmer out there and you want to make a gift to us, we'll be happy to take that. Um, but it needs to be before the end of the month uh, because uh, the tax credit is for the 2023 tax year. Okay. Well, what else should our listeners know about the CTO besides you manage it, you help manage it? You, if you want to get in contact with you, we can leave some well, information. Well, I, I, th but I think some things out I, th there. I think one of the things that people don't know is that, that we're the we're the single largest funding source of outside fundraisers, really, for the Catholic schools in the Diocese of Des Moines. Um, and that's something that most people don't realize. They may have a, an event at their local school, but, for example, just at Dowling Catholic this year, we're, we're donate, we, we funded over 454 kids that went to their... Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Get up to $5,500 off MSRP on new Sierra 1500s, plus 0.9% APR for 36 months. Up to $8,000 off MSRP on new Silverado 1500 Turbo Max. And save on the 2024 Equinox with a $500 rebate, plus 1.9% APR for 36 months. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. DeArmondChevyGMC.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Hey, 
you too. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some wins. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. It's just you and one other person, right? Yeah, we keep it. We keep our staffing low, slow, and no, not slow. <laughs> no, 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 no. Gotcha. I, I, now she, they're gonna, they're gonna. Chelsea's listening Chelsea's right listening, now, and she's gonna say, "Oh man, you really gave you dig on me." No, honestly, we we our our purpose is to make sure that we keep our expenses low so that we can give more money out to kids. Mark, thanks for joining us here at halftime. You're always welcome to Thank sit you. in. You know that. Class of '80 has a special place in my heart. Yeah, you know. thanks. Me too. Mark Reed, executive director of of CTO Iowa. We'll take a break and come back with our second half tip-off, Dowling and Anki Centennial. The Maroons lead at 25-13 here at halftime, and we'll return after these messages. Yeah, this is just a one-minute break. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Mark Amadale alongside Scott Babinet, simulcasting tonight on CISN with the Iowa Catholic Radio Network as we have our first foul of the second half, assessed to Centennial, and that would be Tilly Smith picking up her third. So she and Maya Crawford both with two fouls each for Ankeny Centennial. It's two starters with uh, three fouls as Maroons had the ball. Corner three, in and out no good by Katie Mullen, a rebound out to the Jags, Dowling 25, and Centennial 13. That was our halftime score. Dowling outscored Centennial 13 or 12 to 6 in that second quarter after Maroons jumped out to a 13 to 7 first quarter lead. And uh, Dowling's defense has certainly stepped up. Uh, Scott Babinet. It, they've done a great job tonight. And, I mean, that was a good drive by Crawford, but a good t contest again. And a rebound comes out to Dowling. The Maroons. Get the ball inside to Ellie Olson, where it's stolen away by the Jaguars. Jags going right to left. They're in the black uniforms with the silver numbers and trim. Dowling in their home white uniforms with the maroon numbers and letters and trim. And now the Jags with it underneath. Here's Ava Martin with it. Gets it out to Maya Crawford, 15 on the shot clock. Dowling staying man-to-man. -man. We haven't seen any zone tonight. They lob it inside and a foul on Ellie Moeller. Get it inside, try to punch it in there. And Scott, you got to look at some of the first half stats. Yeah, the first half, Centennial shot four for 19 from the field, uh, five for eight from the line, uh, three turnovers, 17 total rebounds, seven of which are offensive. The Maroons eight for 27 from the field, five for nine from the line, two turnovers, 21 rebounds, eight offensive. So the Maroons are winning the rebounding battle so far in this game. And foul situation, both teams with a foul each here in the third quarter. And now they're, I think that now. So they're corrected the foul. Jaden Pratt picked up the foul. That's her second, not Tilly Smith. Yeah, she jumped out on, on that foul. When she's called for that foul, jumped yep. out. To so they got that fixed on the uh, in the book, made the announcement to the PA announcer here, Denny O'Grady, and now we're underway. And so Tenya works the ball inside, and a shot no good by Jaden Pratt. Rebound Ellie Muller, Dowling down court, layup by Zedekers, no good. Ball might have been partially tipped on the way up. Rebound out to Centennial, so both teams with empty possessions. Good opportunities, too. And, <laughs> Scott, we're almost uh, 
two and a half minutes in, and no score here in the second half. <laughs> These teams are going to absolutely hate their shooting percentages. <laughs> All right, here's Pratt, or rather, a shot in the lane by Maya Crawford, no good. She's struggling tonight, no points. She's Centennial's leading scorer, averaging 14 and a half and seven rebounds, and a three-pointer from the top of the key by Tritton is good. She's got nine points on three threes, and Dowling leading 28-13. The Maroons by 15 here in the second half. She's trying to make up for the other night, right? Yeah. <laughs> Southeast Polk leading Waukee 22-20 to at the half in their game tonight in that girls' contest, and now that was... Jaden Pratt with her 13th point as she shoots and scores for the Jaguars. Dowling with the ball. There's Katie Muller, dribbles the left side, cut off by Ava Martin, reverses it out to Zedeker. Zedeker in the lane, spins, works against Tilly Smith, and her shot no good. Ball slapped around, and we got a whistle and a reach around foul call on Ellie Muller, and that'll be her third. Yeah, that was kind of. There's a lot of forcing going on right now with these shots, and you know, just again, 35 seconds is a long time. You can get a good shot, and if they'll settle down, if Dowling will settle down, actually, if both teams will settle down, they would get the shot they wanted. All right, 4:40 remaining here in the third quarter. Dowling 28, Yankee Centennial 15. Dowling led 25-13 at the half. Jags with the basketball. Finley Blackmore with it on the baseline. Shot up and good right over Katie Moeller. So Blackmore with her fourth point. Runes the other way. And Dowling's lead 11. Here's Harden with it. Macy in the game for Dowling Catholic. Over in the corner, a three-pointer up and good by Katie Moeller. That's got to feel real good for her. She struggled tonight. She's had a lot of open looks, but that's a her first that's a point. Good finish. Yep. Yeah, her first point points of the night. And now underneath, and that's a little give and go. Jaden Pratt shoots and scores. Yeah, she's doing a good job of they're trying to front her, and she's just kind of lifting them out of off the block and giving herself plenty of space to finish. 15 points for Pratt. Dowling with the ball. Here's Harden with it. Skip pass in the corner to Katie Muller in the lane and draws the foul. And it'll be before the shot. And I think they're going to get Ava Martin, number one, for Centennial. Nope. They'll get the person who was helping out, Jaden Pratt, with That's the her foul. Third. Her third. And that is her third. So Pratt and Crawford with three fouls each for, three fouls each, rather, for Centennial. Tilly Smith with two fouls after they got uh, that foul adjusted. Dowling with the ball. Brand new shot clock. Here's Zedeker, left wing, dribbles baseline, is cut off. Double team on the baseline, kicks it back out to Katie Muller. Katie with it. Dribbles down the right side of the lane, cut off nicely by Ava Martin. Good defense by Centennial. And a good patient play to pull it back out. You had nothing, so don't force it. Now here's Dowling with the ball on the baseline. A shot up and good. Layla Tritton hangs that ball right on the edge of the rim, and it falls through. She's done a really good job tonight. 11 points now for Layla Tritton. She had no points Tuesday night against Valley. Oh, shot up and no good by Centennial, and Dowling will take over with just under three minutes remaining here in the third quarter, and a timeout called by Ankeny Centennial head coach Scott DeYoung, one of the veteran coaches here in the uh, CIML. Scott has been the head coach at Centennial since its inception, its 11th year. 35 years overall, over 700 wins, a legend. And he's retired from teaching, taught business at the Ankeny School System, and now he's a chipper. He goes out and chips tree stumps <laughs> in the area. I have a cell number, folks, if you'd like to get a hold of him, but he doesn't do it during the winter. But yeah. he's just enjoying retirement. He said, that's what I like to do, Mark, and uh, God love him. And yeah. uh, what, a, what a man, what a guy, and he's had some great teams and won what, Seven or eight. Six, uh, six state championship at, at Ankeny and one at Centennial. And so didn't he have one seven. at Colo when it was six on six? That doesn't count, then? does it? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd count it. I argue with my wife about six on six <laughs> basketball. A championship all the time. is a championship. That's right. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Klein Electric, Skeffington's formal wear, and construction professionals. Mark Amadale alongside Scott Babinat. And Brady Grimm, our studio producer for Iowa Catholic Radio. And, hey, the CISN crew is here tonight. Randy Nielsen, who is our producer on the TV side, A.J. Laporte, and Gavin Ipson, 
on the cameras, thanks to those gentlemen behind us. Can you even imagine how many points Clark would have averaged in a three on three? <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and I'm glad you kind of mentioned that because we were talking about this. Tom Donahue and a few others are, this is the 50th year of Dowling girls basketball. They started back in 1973. I know the rest of the state started in 1923, but uh, the, C the Central Iowa area didn't start basketball until the 70s. And this is the 50th year. And there's going to be a kind of a ceremony before one of the games. They're going to try to get as many of the players back. And that'll be sometime in February, so stay tuned. I know Tom Donahue and crew are doing that. And now Dowling with the ball underneath the Macy Harden, and she shoots and scores. She had a nice night, six points on Tuesday, and now two points there. And that's what they wanted her to do in the first half when Crawford was guarding her with three fouls. They wanted her to go at her and be aggressive. And now Pratt underneath, double teamed, and drew the foul as she spun. She got a nice first move there on that pivot. Foul on Dowling, and it'll be on Layla Tritton, her second, and team foul number two on Dowling. Yeah, that's a tough matchup inside for Zedeker. Uh, Pratt's probably just a little bit stronger, and uh, she's fighting, but uh, Layla came to help her when she put the ball down and got the foul. That'll reset the shot clock. 2.20 remaining here in the third quarter, 35-19. Dowling with the lead over Centennial. Runes with three fouls in the quarter. Centennial with two. Now down the lane, a shot too strong off the glass, no good by Tilly Smith. Fight for the rebound. As in there is Ellie Olson and Pratt. And it'll be a tie-up. It'll be Dowling basketball. So the Maroons will have it. Oops. Dowling going with Harden and Tritton. Zedeker, Ellie Olson. Katie Muller. And Katie Muller. And now underneath Harden, she has the ball stripped from behind by Maya Crawford. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, she had her beat around the corner there. She just, you know, it's just that deliberate dribble. It's not out in front to keep that uh, push from behind from the defender. Nice game in Iowa Catholic Radio, brought to you in part by Bozen the Florist and Ashworth Vision Clinic. Here's Zedeker for three on the inbounds pass. Her shot no good. Weak side rebound, Jaden Pratt and Centennial. Jags with it. Here's Maya Crawford. Gets in the corner to Tilly Smith. They're working underneath to Kiel Kylan Smith. Her shot up and good. Yeah, she forced that through the block there. She certainly did. That's her first basket of the night for Kylan Smith. Came in averaging four points. Underneath, Dowling works it. Her shot up and no good by Ellie Olson. Rebound Centennial. 35-21. Dowling by 14. The Maroons have led by as many as 15 tonight. That was a good slip there at the high post. She just didn't know where she was when she landed. Here's Crawford with it. Dowling helps underneath. Crawford, a fadeaway jumper, lays it short. Rebound Zedeker and Dowling. Maroons running. Three on two, fast break. Underneath the diagonal pass. Layup is good by Layla Tritton. And Zedeker with a bullet. And that's what they need to keep doing. This really compromises Centennial's ability to defend when you can get out and run. Layla Tritton with 13 points. 12 points for Zedeker, and it's 37-21. Dowling by their largest lead of 16 here in the second half over second-ranked Centennial. Now an offensive foul as they get Jaden Pratt trying to clear out underneath on the right block, and that'll be her fourth foul. Maroon's defense came to play. Dowling through three games was giving up, Scott, 64 points. That's un-Dowling-like as last year the Maroons were... Averaging right around 42 points they gave up. Well, tonight they've held Centennial to 21 points, and we're almost through with the third quarter. Centennial comes in. They average 64 points in offense. They've been giving up an average of 30 points on defense. Right. This and is th quite the turnaround. Yeah, I, I think Coach Meyer would tell you that the difference in uh, the competition going up to Minnesota for their first two games is a huge advantage in the season. It starts off the statistics aren't going to look good, but... Uh, they'll bring them back down throughout the year. I believe that would be her approach to this. <laughs> Ten on the shot clock, 11 seconds left on the game clock, so just a, about a one-second differential. Five on the shot clock. Maroons swinging around. Better Here's it. Tritton with it. Puts up a shot off the glass, no good, and a shot clock violation. Or are they going to call it the end of the third quarter? Uh, I guess they are. Yeah. So we've come to the end of the third quarter with the score. Dowling Catholic 37. 
Anki Centennial 21, Mark Amadil, Scott Babinette here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in one minute. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. First Friday of the girls and boys basketball season. Just the opposite of last year, Scott. Maroons were on the road five of their first six games in December. This year, the Maroons home five of their first six games. We'll be on the road Tuesday night, Dowling at Johnston, the girl boy doubleheader. Out of the timeout, basket by Centennial as they put the ball down the lane and a shot good by Finley Blackmore. Now a long three, no good by Dowling. Blackmore with her fourth point to start the fourth quarter, 37-23. Dowling with the lead as the Maroons. Both teams got good shots on their first possessions, which is probably a huge relief to the coaches. Yeah, Dowling outscoring uh, Centennial 12-8 in the third quarter. Now a shot in the lane, no good. Rebound Ellie Muller. And the... Ball stolen away by Maya Crawford. She turns and takes it right at Moore, and it's blocked out of bounds once again. I think that's the third or fourth block for Moore. Out of bounds for Centennial. Yeah, there's a good contest after the turnover there. So the Jags will inbound the ball. With it is Pratt. Leaves it for Blackmore for three. It's no good. Boy, she's off the mark tonight. She was second on the team and made threes with six, and she's having a, one of those cold shooting nights. She has... Six points, and 0 for the field from the three-point line. 37-23 Dowling, seven minutes left, fourth quarter. Mark Amadale alongside Scott Babinet. Glad you could join us. Dowling with the ball. This is Macy Harnden in the corner. Now dribbles in the lane to the right block. Leads it for Zedeker right wing. Ankeny Centennial stays man-to-man. Harnden catch and shoots the three. It's no good. And the rebound cleared out of there by Jaden Pratt and Centennial. Jags in the front court. Well, Pratt goes underneath. Her shot blocked out of bounds by Ella Muller. And Ellie, they just insist on taking the ball to the 6-1 yeah. Dowling post. And when she keeps her arms straight up and, and it can extend towards the shot as they release, it's better. They can get into her body. A lot of times they can get her to come down on the shot and get to draw the foul, which, are, which is what they want to do. It's just not happening as much. The Jags with the... Uh, Basketball, 20 on the shot clock. In the corner it goes to Lizzie Beam. Now they lob it in the post to Pratt. Back to Beam for three. Missed everything, no good. And the ball tipped out of bounds by Maya Crawford as she was battling Tritton over there on the weak side. It'll be Dowling basketball. Yeah, Pratt's used to uh, operating inside and posting up and getting some easy shots. Dowling's contested everything for her tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. Done a good job of contesting. She's scoring, but everything's difficult. And Dowling with the ball. We're going to use some of that shot clock time. Six minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. The Maroons by 14. Now pass over to Harden for three. Good! Macy Harden, corner three. She's got five off the bench. 37-23. Not that uh, Centennial was not playing a zone, but they were kind of sagging off Macy. And Dowling with the lead. And now underneath, a shot knocked out of bounds by the Maroons. Blackmore, the shooter. Substitution, Ellie Olson will check in for Dowling. And Katie Muller will check out. And when teams focus so much on Zedeker, that's going to open up those open shots for these younger players. And they've got to knock them down. 
and which will in turn open her up. Here's Crawford with it. Maya in the lane. Jump stop up. Good. Maya Crawford, believe it or not, her first basket of the night. And it's 40 to 25 Dowling. And now Ellie Moore for three, and it's good. And that's her second three of the night. And uh, 18 point lead. I don't think she scored a three last year at all, and she didn't. So how about that? Second of the year, 43-25 Dowling. And the three-pointer no good by Centennial. Ellie Moore with nine points tonight. 43-25 Dowling, just under five minutes to play. Down the lane, shot up, and knocked out of bounds. It's no good by Tritton, but she drew the foul. It'll be Finley Blackmore picking up her first foul, and free throws coming for Tritton. Dowling 5 of 9 at the free throw line as both teams did not attempt a free throw in that third quarter. Yeah, free throws have been not very much valued tonight by either team. Kind of noticed that. Second free throw good by Tritton. She has 14 points tonight. Goes one for two at the line there. 44-25. Dowling by 19 over second-ranked Centennial. Jaguars pull-up jumper no good by Pratt. Rebound Dowling. And the Maroons come in leading the series 8-6. to six. And Unless things change, Dowling's going to win five of their last seven meetings between these two teams. Four minutes and 20 seconds to go. Here's Zedeker for three. It's no good over Ava Martin. Weak side rebound and put back good by Ellie Muller. She's in double figures with 11 points. And the offensive glass now being controlled by Dowling if we saw Centennial do that in the second quarter, Scott. Right. Yeah, they've, they've just done a good job of shutting the, the door on that. Shot in the lane, no good by Maya Crawford. Dowling the other way. Pull up three is no good by Layla Tritton. Dowling gets the offensive glass. And Ava Zedeker looks to the Dowling coaching staff right in front of us, and he says they're just going to run their run some clock here. The shot clock now resets at 20 now. Zedeker lobs it in to Muller, and it's stolen away by Crawford. Maya Crawford with the steal, lamp with the left hand, good. Crawford with her fourth point of the night, all here in the fourth quarter, 46-27. Dowling by 19. Harnden for three. Top of the key. Good. Second three of the quarter for Harnden. Off the bench now with eight points. And that was with Pratt coming out to challenge hard there. That's a good ball movement to get that open shot, though. She's just shooting so confidently. Harnden with four threes on the season through four games. 49-27. Dowling. Wins by their largest lead of 22. And now a shot from the corner, no good. Out of bounds to Dowling. And substitutions. Returning to the Dowling lineup, Katie Muller. Also, Leah Brauch, number four. Sitting down, Ellie Muller and Layla Tritton. Full court pressure by Centennial in the backcourt. They double team Zedeker. She gets it out to Katie Muller. Muller's pass tipped away right in front of the Dowling. Bench. Zedeker will throw it in right in front of Coach Danner, right below us. <laughs> Here's Olsen with it. That's Ellie Olsen. Out to Zedeker. 2.40 remaining, fourth quarter. Dowling by 22, 49 27. And Zedeker all the way down and takes Ava Martin low and shoots and scores. Zedeker with 14 points. Uh, that was great. Uh thought process there. Just clear that side for her to take her. Zedeker and Tritton with 14 points each. Yeah. 51-27 Maroons. Now free throws coming for Centennial. It's a whistle and a foul on Ellie Olson. That'll be her first foul. Team foul number one on Dowling here in the fourth quarter. And that's Kylan Smith shooting free throws for Centennial. First one up and good. Kylan, a, actually her first 
free throw attempt tonight. She's two for two on the season. Second one coming. And good. Four points for uh, Kylan Smith off the bench for Centennial, the 5'11 junior, 51-29 Centennial. Give a shout-out here to a certain men's basketball coach here in town who's out driving and out. Corner three, no good by Brock, but blocked nicely by Crawford. Coach Dennis Schaefer, longtime coach at Grandview University. He could coach him up. <laughs> he got me involved with the toilet paper game for about five years there. That's a William Penn Grandview game. You ever heard of that? Uh, Scott, uh, I how saw it on that? TV last yeah. year for the first time. I had to go through it. I didn't realize the media had a, was responsible for picking up the toilet paper in the gym, <laughs> and uh, I found that out the hard way. Schaefer didn't tell me that. <laughs> Coach Schaefer, drive careful wherever you're going. Hopefully it's on a recruiting mission that you'll be successful at. You always are. The only thing is, Schaefer lives in Johnson. That's the only <laughs> knack, uh, knock that I have on the guy. But So that was their version of 52-card pickup, huh? 51-29, <laughs> Dowling. Two minutes to play. And Centennial with the ball. They try to get it down low into Kylan Smith's hands, and it's knocked out of bounds. And now we're going to see the benches begin to empty. And a reminder, coming up next for the Ankeny Centennials, they have a bye on Tuesday, normally... All the teams with a nine-team league, you're going to have a bye. Well, Ankeny's bye is Tuesday, and they do not have a non-conference game. So their next game for Centennial Girls will be a week from tonight. They'll be home against number five Valley in a girl boy doubleheader at the Centennial Gym. The Dowling Girls, they'll be taking on number one Johnston Tuesday night at the Johnston Gym. Last year, Dowling knocked off the Dragons and snapped their over 30-game winning streak. Yeah. Ends with the ball, and then Nelly Johnson in the corner for three, and it's good. Nelly off the JV team, and Coach Donahue, 5'7", sophomore, drains a three, 54-29 Dowling. Minute and a half to go. Going to get the ball inside to Lizzie Beam as Centennial down court immediately, but uh, Nelly Johnson had a chance to coach here at Holy Trinity and knocks down her first varsity three. Be a good memory. Emma Hunger in for Centennial, and she lobs the ball inside, and a foul called on Dowling. It'll be on Lee Brauk. Thanks to our officials tonight. Always glad to see them here. Tim Oosterhaus, Bryant Abel, and Ben Miles, our three men officiating crew. Veterans, and I know two of the three have worked the state tournament, and they have a little bit at stake with some of these games with their input that they receive and second free throw is no good by Rylan Boating so she goes one for two at the line for Centennial Rylan a 5'11 sophomore Dowling with the rebound leading 54-30 minute 10 to go Dowling with the ball here's a three pointer up and <laughs> good by Katie Moeller I think the Maroons love the three. <clears throat> Muller with her seventh point. 46 seconds to go, 57-30. Dowling by 27. And a whistle and a foul on the play on Dowling. Jags get the ball in no matter who's playing. Coach DeYoung pushes that ball. And the foul will be on Maddie Rice, who's in there for the Maroons. Rice a... 5'8 sophomore. Free throws once again coming for Ryland Boating. And she hits the first free throw. Ryland averaging four and a half points off the bench for Centennial. Makes them both. She's got three points. 57-32 Dowling. 40 seconds remaining. Here's Muller with it. In the corner it goes to Brauch. And now corner three up and no good. Weak side rebound, Nelly Johnson. Now three-pointer right wing. Good! Runs are knocking him down. Maddie Rice with her first varsity points. She's got a three. 60 to 32 Dowling. And even these last few minutes, when you're executing well, coaches take good pride in that with their teams. And both teams, both teams, even though it's stretched out, have been executing here these last two, three minutes at a lot of times people don't think it matters. Lizzie Beam scores for Centennial, and that'll do it. 60-34 to 34 is the final. 
Dowling Catholic improves its record to 2-2 two and two on the season. And Centennial with its first loss of the year after being ranked number two yesterday by the Iowa High School Girls Athletic Union. Jaguars now 3-1 and one on the season. And Dowling now has won five of the last seven meetings between the two teams. We'll take a one-minute break and return. We'll have our statistics here, and we'll go a little post-game. CISN and Iowa Catholic Radio doing the simulcast tonight, so stay tuned. Alongside Scott Babinet, I'm Mark Amadale. Final in the girls' contest, Dowling 60, Yankee Centennial 34. We'll return after this one-minute break, and we'll recap game one. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeYarmid Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Up to $15,000 on new Ram 2500s. Up to $12,500 on new Ram 1500 Laramies. 0% for 72 months on new Ram 1500 Bighorns. Up to $7,000 on a 2023 Durango. And new 2023 Jeep Renegade starting at $26,990. Incredible year-end savings at DeYarmid Automotive Knoxville. Discounts off MSRP. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. And we are back here at the Dowling Gym, the final in game one. It was a Dowling Catholic defeating Ankeny Centennial 60 to 34 as Dowling evens its record at two and two on the year. And Centennial falls to three and one as we total up the uh, numbers here in game one. As both teams emptied their benches in the latter part of this uh, contest. And I think we got them all in there. So I'll start off. Scott, I know you're still uh, pulling up the numbers for the visitors from Ankeny Centennial. They were led by Jaden Pratt, the 5'10 junior for the Jaguars, the leading sc scorer and in double, only player in double figures, rather, for Centennial with 15 points. She was followed by Finley Blackmore, the 5'11 junior, with six points. Four points for Kylan Smith, the 5'11 junior off the bench for the Jags. Four points for Maya Crawford. She was in foul trouble. She had her third foul in the first half and sat most of the first half and part of the second half. She finished with four points all in the fourth quarter as she came in. Centennial's leading scorer, averaging 14.7 rebounds. And again, Maya Crawford, the Drake recruit, finished in with four points. Three points for Rylan Boating off the bench, voting a 5'11 sophomore, and Lizzie Beam, a 5'8 freshman, finishing with two points. The Jaguars, 11 of 14 at the free throw line tonight. For Dowling Catholic, the Maroons had three players in double figures, led by junior Ava Zedeker and junior Layla Tritton with 14 points. 11 points for the sophomore Ellie Muller. Rounding out scoring for Dowling, Macy Harnden off the bench with eight points. Seven points for Katie Muller. Welcome to the CISN Game Break Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. It's good to see everyone back for this winter basketball season. We appreciate you watching tonight's game here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Got a little bit of time to kill before our next game, so we wanted to go through a show on a game-by-game -game basis, per week, if you will, of how everything's going to shape out. It's the beginning of the season, so we can talk about what we expect could happen or some storylines, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Well, we'll jump right into your top boys basketball storylines for all the CIML teams this upcoming season. We'll start out with Ankeny, 9-15 last year. They return 
their top two scorers in Carson Johnson at 15 points per contest and Leo Aguirre at 14.3. While the record a little misleading last year, they hung in tight in a lot of close games. And with Carson and Leo coming back, Ankeny will be a true threat in the CIML. Waukee Northwest, 23-3 last season, fell short in the Class 4A title game. It's the big one that they have to replace. They have to replace Price Sanford and Cade Kellerman. They're big one-two punches here for the last couple seasons. That's the big question. Who steps up for Waukee Northwest? Grant Tigges is back. Natish Sakaranthi brings a little bit of size down in the post. Waukee Northwest will be fun to watch this season as they try to replace their stars. Ankeny Centennial, 16-8 last season, showed signs at times of being a really top-tier team, and it was all thanks to Luke Winkle. He averaged 16.8 points per contest. He comes back this year as a senior. He is going to be the guy to watch. He is one of the top leading scorers in the state. He's shifty. He can shoot quick. Watch out for Luke Winkle and Ankeny Centennial this season. Valley, 21-5. and five. Is there much else to say about this team? Pretty much all sophomores last year, and they went out and upset a couple teams and made it to the state tournament and won the whole thing. The biggest thing for them, can they handle the pressure that is now on them? Curtis Stinson, 13.1 per game. Zay Robinson, 12.6 per game. And Kiki Dang, 10.1 per game. Guess what? They're all now juniors. you got to deal with them for two more years. How can Valley keep it up with all the pressure to repeat for another straight year? Johnston at 11-12. A little bit of a down year for the Dragons last year, but they bring in head coach Courtney Henderson from Des Moines Hoover. Des Moines Hoover went to the state tournament last year in the Class 3A tournament. Courtney Henderson comes over and takes care or takes the helm of the Johnston Dragons. We'll see how he does this season. Waukee at 23-3 also have to replace big names. Omaha Blue, Cade Littlefield, Vance Pfeiffer, Cooper Randall, and a couple others are all off to their collegiate careers. It's now up to the younger guys to come in and step up. Mason Costello will lead the way for Waukee as they also try to replace their stars. Dowling Catholic, 10-13. and 13. Joey Coppola returns, averaging 10.3 points per contest. We'll see what he can do this season as Dowling looks to get back over 500. Southeast Polk, 9-15. Their leading scorer returns, Bodie Goodman. They lost two very talented seniors, but Bodie returns at 15.4 points per game. We'll see what he can do with Southeast Polk this season. Also held into a lot of close games. And Urbandale at 10 and 14 last year brings back Grant Uecker at 11.6 points per game. And Brevin Phillips at 9.6 points per game. He returns as well. So there's a lot of new faces in the CIML this year. There's a lot of returning faces. We'll have to see what happens here in the boys' basketball season. It's shaping up to be a good one. We'll step aside for a quick second. We'll be back to take a look at your top girls' basketball headlines. You're watching the CISN Game Break Show. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Welcome back to the CISN Game Break Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. It's time to take a look at the top storylines to watch for each girls basketball team here on the CIML. We'll start out with Ankeny. At 12-11 and 11 last year, they return their top two scores. A lot to be excited for. Savannah Gage, 16.6 points per contest. And Jayla Williams both come back. Jayla averages 11 points per contest. Ankeny, another team that was over 500, several teams over 500 or 10 wins or more last year in the CIML just shows how competitive it was. Waukee Northwest, 8-13 last year in the first year without Coach Chris Guest. Sadie Moss led the way, though, 13.3 points per game. She comes back, and behind her is a whole bunch of youth. A lot of freshmen and sophomores will be behind Sadie Moss, but it's good to have your senior leader back, and that is what Waukee Northwest will depend on this season. Ankeny Centennial, they lost three talented seniors, but get this, they don't have any seniors this year. Juniors Jaden Pratt and Maya Crawford will lead the way. It's a very tough, physical, defensive team that Ankeny Centennial is keep an eye out for the Jags, especially with not having to worry about losing anyone this year. 
The Valley Tigers at 15 and three last, or 15 and nine this last season, they return Elise Yeager. We all know how talented she is in multi-sports, volleyball, softball, basketball. Elise Yeager, 12.7 points per game. She will lead the way. And always know, Valley is not going to quit. This team will always be good. Do not count out the Valley Tigers this year, especially with Elise Yeager leading the way. Johnston, 24-2. This team is flat-out scary. Fell short in the title game last year to Pleasant Valley, but they return all three of their top scorers. Aaliyah Tanky, 15.5 points per game. Aaliyah Riley, 13.5 points per game. And the talented freshman, now sophomore, Jenica Lewis, returns at 12.2 points per game. This Johnston team is clear and away the top favorite to win Class 5A this year. Waukee at 11 and 12. Is this the year under Coach Franklin? They return their top three scores. Kristen Houck at 12.5 points per game. Sophia Hope, 11 points per contest. And Emily Sorensen, 10.6 points per contest. Lost a couple close games last year that felt like they could have gone either way. Is this the year Waukee takes the step after almost beating Waterloo West last year in the regional championship game? Dowling Catholic at 20 and 5. They lose a couple very talented seniors, but they return arguably one of the best players in Class 5A. Ava Zedeker returns to her junior season, averaging 19.6 points per game. She's close to what Caitlin Clark was at Dowling Catholic. She can shoot, she can move. Ava will be the leader for the Maroons this season. Keep an eye on Dowling Catholic to make a run. Southeast Polk at 15 and 8. They lost their top two scorers, but return Alyssa Bartlett at 10.2 points per contest and Zoe Hines at 6.2 points per contest. Southeast Polk could be another tricky team, and we know how good that coaching staff is over there for Southeast Polk as well. Urbandale at 6 and 18. They only graduated four seniors, and they return their leading scorer, Devin Charlie at seven points per contest. Urbandale could be a very interesting team to watch if things go the right way, and a lot of youth on that roster as well. And those were your headlines for all the CIML girls basketball teams this upcoming season. We're going to take one more break, and we'll be back to take a look at your first week preseason rankings out of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. We'll catch you up with those right after the break. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, Get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and if this year is anything like last year, folks are going to be coming in early to get things for their houses. What you need is a high-efficient gas insert from Heat & Glow. Come in now and beat the rush, and Heat & Glow will help you out with some special promotions on gas inserts. We'll be doing up to $200 off on our gas metal inserts to retrofit into your drafty old wood fireplace. Come early, beat the rush. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. New Iowa High School girls basketball rankings released here on Thursday, November 30th. These are your updated top 15 rankings. Johnson comes in at number one, a perfect 3-0 record to start the season. Ankeny Centennial jumps from fifth to second. They are 3-0 on the year. Pleasant Valley drops one spot. They are 1-1. Davenport North is 0-2 to start the season, but they remain at the number four spot. West Des Moines Valley jumps from 7th to 5th after their upset over Dowling Catholic. They're 3-0. Dowling Catholic is 1-2 with their losses being to Valley and an out-of-state opponent. Their only win is also out-of-state. They drop from 3rd to 6th in the rankings. Waukee jumps up to 7th after being 8th last week. They are 2-0. Ankeny 2-1 is 8th in the rankings after being 13th. That's because of the win against Cedar Falls. Sioux City East is at 9th. Cedar Falls is at 10th after the loss to Ankeny. They were 6th, now 10th. Southeast Polk stays the same at 11th at 3-0. Waukee Northwest is 12th after dropping 2 and after the loss to Johnston. Waterloo West 13th. Cedar Rapids Prairie 14th at 0-1. And Muscatine jumps into the rankings in Class 5A at top 15. They are 2-0. Sioux City West is the only team to drop out. Plenty of CIML teams to see all across the top 15. You love to see it, especially here in the Metro. That's going to do it for us here on the CISN Game Break Show. We hope you enjoy your next game up on the docket. 
And thank you, as always, for watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. I'm your host, Blake Walker. Have a good game. And we saw that Tuesday night with Cole. He had his first three three-point shots and then got cold throughout the game. And consistency is going to be huge with Cole Southard. And, and I think his, his confidence in shooting the ball comes from making shots early and then continuing that on throughout the game. And if he can knock down those threes, which we've seen him do, uh, big things are going to happen for Cole. But Ryan Kleppe is a young man that we need to see some great offensive production. And I think he knows that. It was stressed to him throughout the week. And uh, I see big things out of Ryan Kleppe tonight. We're going to take a one-minute break. We'll be back with the uh, tip-off and starting lineups. Dowling and Ankeny Centennial. Game two here at the Dowling Gym tonight. Mark Amadil, Jimmy Cataldo. We'll be back with starting lineups after this one-minute break here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and CISN. Fifty-two wins, seventy-eight losses, thirty-three years as a head coach, and four hundred fifty-two wins, two hundred seventy-eight losses. He's assisted by Matt Delger, Connor Casperbauer, Luke Donato, and Matt Klingler. And Jags will start this lineup at one guard, Connor Welsh, six-two senior. He'll wear number two. The other guard is Joey Oki, a six-three senior. He'll wear number twelve. And the third guard is Nick Vasky, six-three senior, wearing number thirteen at one forward. Chase Shetty, a 6'5 senior, and of course the point guard for Centennial and the leading scorer, Luke Winkle, number 14, a 6'1 senior, averaging 18.7 rebounds. Jags come in, averaging 64 points on offense, give up 51 on defense. For Dowling Catholic, the head coach is Justin Einertsen in his first year, eighth year overall. He's assisted by John Nagel, Jimmy Nahas, Zach Nicholson, and Kevin O'Hare. Maroons will start a three-guard lineup. Point guard is Joey Coppola, 5'11 senior, wearing number four. Dante Cataldo, a six-foot senior, wearing number two, is the other guard. And the third guard is Cole Southern, a 6'1 senior, wearing number one. At one forward, Ryan Kleppe, a 6'3 senior, wearing number 12. And at center, Joe Broderick, 6'4 senior, sat out last year with an ACL injury. 31 points, 17 rebounds in game one. He'll wear number 10 for Dowling, who comes in averaging 53 points on offense, 59 on defense. Jimmy? Real quick, some of the keys you see. Well, I see the keys right now is, is Luke Winkle. Luke, see, he's the the, uh, the the straw that stirs the drink for Centennial, and Dowling has to play with the same intensity they played against Valley, continue to learn from uh, Coach Anderson's system, and uh, have a lot of success taking the ball to the basket. All right, corner three by Cole Sutter. It is good. Left corner three, and Dowling out to a 3 nothing lead. We mentioned it earlier that uh, Cole Southern's a kid who can shoot the ball. Him making his first shot. Should give him a lot of confidence going forward, but staying consistent throughout the game is going to be critical. Centennial in their road black uniforms with uh, white trim and white numbers and letters. Dowling in their home white uniforms with maroon trim. And inside a layup up and good by Connor Welsh. Strong Ooh. move. Connor Welsh, a tremendous move that time. And it's 3-2. to two. Dowling with the lead early. Both teams stay man-to-man. -man. And now corner three, Southern again. He's feeling it good. Cole with his second three of the night. And he's got six points, and that is his fifth three of the year. You, you try to find your favorite spot in the court, and I think that, that left uh, corner uh, baseline shot by Cole seems to be his favorite shot or spot on the court. 
find him there early and often. And a corner three no good by Centennial and Joey Oki and a rebound out of bounds. They say it went off the Dowling. So it'll be Jaguar basketball. Tonight's game being simulcast with CISN. Our thanks to Randy Nielsen who produces and A.J. Laporte and Gavin Epson on the cameras for CISN. This is Mark Amadil alongside Jimmy Cataldo. Glad you could join us. Pack Dowling Jim. And now a long three by Joey Oki, no good. And the rebound out to Dowling. Ankeny Centennial, not afraid to shoot. Kleppy for three, it's no good. And a loose ball foul on the Maroons. And that foul will be on Cole Southard, his first. You look out on the, on the court, and you just see a lot of athletes, both in Centennial and Dowling, multi-sport athletes across the board That's right. uh, for both teams. And so I think you're going to see physicality. You're going to see some up-tempo, intense game. Uh, both defensively and offensively from these uh, two teams. Yeah, very competitive and a great crowd and a great atmosphere here at Dowling. Centennial brought a, their fan base here. They sit amongst us as we speak. Six to two is our score. Dowling with the lead on a pair of three-pointers by Cole Southard. Right, Jags with it on the baseline is Chase Shuddy. Ten on the shot clock. Shuddy goes baseline, kicks it out. Long three coming up and short. And... Taken up is Chase Shetty off the pass as he got it to his teammate, Nick Vasky, and they're going to he rolled his ankle a little bit. Well, it, it's sort of a, a bizarre stop and play. Uh, you know, as, as the Maroons get the rebound, they're running the court on a fast break, and the stoppage happens because of the injury happened at the baseline. And I'm not sure how all those things work, but you know, if you're, if you're a, a, a team getting a rebound on a, on a run, you don't want to have that clock stopped for uh, for an injury there. Yeah, especially when you got the, uh, the rebound and... Official playing it safe. A veteran crew here, state tournament crew, Tim Osterhaus, Bryant Abel, and Ben Miles. And now Dowling reverse layup up and good. The basket will count and a foul on Centennial as Joey Coppola got the ball to go. And he drew the foul. And it will be on Connor Welsh, his first. And that's the first team foul on Centennial. So both teams with a foul each. Joey taking the ball strong to the basket. I think he was waiting for a Centennial player to come over to help out on defense, and nobody showed up. Continued on straight through. Coppola misses the free throw. Offensive rebound, Dowling. Three-pointer top of the key. Who else? Cole Southard. He's got nine points, and the Maroons are out to an 11-2 lead. And this will be a 30-second timeout. We will keep it here. How about that lead? How about this uh, start? You know, we mentioned cliche. Always get off to a good start. Yes. Well, the Maroons did it tonight. Yeah, and it, we... We know we know Cole can shoot the ball. We've seen it time and time. We talked about it in pregame. A uh, lot of confidence, but you got to you got to stick with your ups and downs. And I think uh, Coach Einerson's doing a great job calming his team down, understanding, stick with the game plan. Shots are going to go. Shots are going to get off. But you got to rebound and play a strong defense. And that's what the Maroons seem to be focusing on in that timeout. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Bose and the Florist, Ashworth Vision Clinic, and Construction Professionals. Mark Amadale, Jimmy Cataldo, you know, one guy who we haven't talked about, Joe Broderick. He's got to feel pretty good about his teammate Southern knocking down three threes in the first quarter. Well, it takes a little attention off of him. That's right. But, you know, <laughs> Joe Broderick draws uh, a defensive presence with Chase Shuddy, who's a strong uh, uh, you know, young man who's going to give him a lot, of, a lot of contact through the offensive play, and so that's going to be an interesting matchup as the game moves on. All right, Centennial with the ball. Oki gets it inside, a shot up, and no good. An offensive foul called on Centennial is down the lane was Nick Vasky, and he's going to be guilty of the charge, and that's his first foul. Good, smart play by Coppola sitting there, sees Vasky going strong to the basket. He isn't the type of size that can really bring a lot of uh, a, a presence to that, that, that dribble drive, but to sit in, take the charge, smart veteran play by Coppola. Dowling in the front court. There's Broderick with it, top of the key to Coppola. Joey with it, down the right side. Pass over in the corner, gets to Kleppe. Top of the key to Cataldo for three. It's no good. Or rather, Southern for three, no good. And ball goes out of bounds, and they say it did go out of bounds. I thought uh, it's just, Winkle had it. It's just one of the things with Southern, right? you got to take the good with the bad. Uh, that time didn't get his legs into it, but he's got to stay composed. A lot of emotion out of Cole early, and why not when you hit your first uh, uh, three, uh, four three-pointers? Yeah. And now a long three by Winkle, in and out, no good. Fight for the rebound, Oki there, and saves the possession for Centennial. Now Shuddy with it in the lane. 
Gets it over in the corner to Vasky. Top of the key, it goes to Oki. Back to Vasky. You see Dante uh, uh, face guard and Winkle wherever he goes, and Dante put, uh, drew the uh, uh, defensive presence on, on Stinson late in the game against Valley and did pretty well, and you can see that's what's happening now. Here's Shuddy's shot, no good, but it was saved from going out of bounds by Connor Welsh, and the possession save for Centennial, and a whistle and a foul called on Dowling. That'll be on Cole Southern. That'll be his second. Or is it on number 10? It's on Broderick, excuse me. So Joe Broderick with his first foul. And free throws coming for Joe Ioki. He's a 50% free throw shooter on the year. 11 to 2, Dowling by 9. Cole Southern hit three of his first four threes tonight to lead Dowling with nine points. Free throw no good. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Skeffington's Formal Wear, the Catholic Tuition Organization, and Klein Electric. Oki at the line. Second free throw in and out, no good. And the rebound, Dowling and Kleppe. Scapola, Kleppe, Broderick, Cataldo, and Southern, the starting five, remains for Dowling. Kleppe for three. It's good. That's the young man we were looking for Tuesday night, and he hits that lefty three. I think there's going to be a lot of attention to try to get Kleppe uh, involved in the game uh, by Coach Einerson. Got a little bit away with a, a, a travel in that, but, but yet... Nice square up jump shots and, uh, and strong play by Kleppe. All right, here's Oki with it, and he turns it over. Nice help defense by Kleppe. Down court, Dowling layup no good by Cataldo, and the ball taken away by Connor Welsh, who goes coast to coast. His layup up and no good, and Coppola will be whistled for the foul, and that'll be Joey Coppola. And as we have a brother combination, Joey and his younger brother Maddox, who is... Not played yet. Nick Frerich set check in for Dowling, number three at the scores table. And the first free throw no good by Welsh. Centennial 0 for 3 at the line tonight. Out of the lineup for Centennial will be Joey Oki. Checking in will be Will Smith, number 31. Smith, a 6'2 junior. Second free throw good by Welsh. Centennial one for four at the line. Dowling leading 14 to three. 340 to go. First quarter from the Dowling Gym. Earlier tonight, the Dowling girls a winner 60 to 34 over Centennial. Long three, no good by Southern. And a rebound out to Centennial and Nick Vasky. Vasky gets in the corner to Shuddy for three. It's no good. Ball goes off the hands of Southern and now tie up on the floor. And a held ball will be Centennial possession. Calling jump ball. Yep, yep. Centennial possession on this. Officials. I think they're going to reset the shot clock. We'll get that fixed. It's up to 35, and it shouldn't be. Hell, ball does not reset the shot clock if you retain possession. You re That's a good point because that, uh, you know, not, not at one point did Dowling uh, take any possession in that. And so they, they put the shot clock to 26. So if you had the ball and you uh, retain possession, the shot clock stays the same. But if you uh, get the ball, then it's reset. And oh, what a strong move in there by Winkle. Layup good. Wow. Luke with his first two points. And it's 14 to 5. Dowling with the lead. Broderick kicks it back out to Coppola. Over to Nick no. Frerichs, number three. Frerichs, six foot senior. They're working inside. And a shot by Broderick, no good. Drew the foul, and it might be on Vasky. It you is. See, you see uh, Broderick getting a little bit antsy, not seeing much, many shots uh, this early in this game, and and uh, that time taking ball to the basket real hard and drawing the foul. And that's what uh, uh, Broderick had a lot of success with against Valley, just taking the ball, thrown to the basket, staying composed around it, and and converting. And and the and young man hasn't missed a free throw in in, in two games. And I'm not going to fosh him, but you but, just but, did. But, it's 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 the athlete that, that uh, Broderick is. You know, we've seen him shoot three point shots, and he's a strong uh, free throw shooter as well. Second free throw, we'll see, is good. You're lucky. You're lucky, Mr. Cataldo. <laughs> you know, Broderick with two points, Dowling 16, Centennial five. Maroons by 11, their largest lead of the night. Maroons trying to go for the doubleheader sweep over Centennial after being swept Tuesday night by both the Valley girls and boys. Now a long three by Welsh is no, no good. And out of bounds to Dowling. 
Connor Welsh, who came in averaging two points, has been very active shooting for Coach Fontana tonight. Well, you know, Winkle draws a lot of presence at, uh, from the defensive side, and so Centennial, we talked about again in the pregame, they, they got to be ready to shoot because Winkle will find you as defenders collapse on him and, 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 and force a double team. Roderick guarded underneath, and reverse layup is good by the Maroons. I think he dished it off that time to Frerichs for the score, and he did. Nick Frerichs with his first basket. It's his first points of the season, 18-5 Dowling. Wins by 13. Centennial gets the ball underneath, and reverse layup up and good by Will Smith off the bench. Smith averaging two points for the Jags after one game, and he shoots and scores there. It's 18-7, to seven, Dowling by 11. Backdoor cut by Capola, layup is good, and whistle and a foul as he got right behind Connor Welsh. We'll see who the foul's on as a basket will be good, and a foul is on Welsh, his second. What that backdoor play, Jimmy? Sure, well, it, it's two straight backdoor plays. The first one by Frerichs the last time down the court, and this time by Capola. And it's probably something that uh, Coach Einerson and, and, and his staff saw on film is that Centennial will overplay on defense, and so back cuts is something that you may want to watch for here as this game progresses. You see Centennial bring their defense outside the lane uh, to pressure a lot of uh, uh, Dowling sets. So backdoor cuts are going to be there uh, as, as, as Dowling runs their offensive sets. All right, Allier Agao, number 33, a 6'8 senior for Dowling, has checked into the lineup as a free throw is good. And Joey Capola completes the three point play. He's got five points in the first quarter. 20 to 7, Dowling by 13, matching their largest lead. Cole Southern checks out for the Maroons. And into the Dowling lineup, Maddox Capola, number 13. So we have Come on, Dale, be the go, younger Dale. brother of Joey in there. Maddox, a 6'1 sophomore. Centennial with the basketball in the front court. They go left to right towards the north basket here in the first half. Dribble handoff to Luke Winkle. He's guarded by Frerichs. Luke spins in the lane, kicks it out. Here's Welsh with it, drives the lane against Capola. Left-handed layup, no good. Ball slapped out of bounds. It'll be Centennial basketball with 12 in the shot clock here, Jimmy. Great great help defense by Allier. Coming around, taking away the dribble drive by Luke Winkle, forcing him to kick the ball out. So you know, right now, Allier, you wonder how, how intense is he going to be? And, and right now, he's really brought his defense and, and given great help defense. Allier's on Kale Jones, who's in there for Centennial. Now underneath is Smith. Whirls, spins in the lane. Nice move by Will Smith as he shoots and scores his fourth point off the bench for Centennial. And it's 21-9 Dowling. Great move by Smith down low. Minute left here in the first quarter. Coppola with the basketball, guarded by Will Smith. Joey right side. Gets to Kleppe. Makes a move on Winkle on the baseline. Gets it to Coppola, now to Allier. Allier a gal. Long three by Coppola. Good. That was from the volleyball line. Joey Coppola with his eighth point here in the first quarter. Something you just didn't see a ton of with Joey Coppola last year. Just real inconsistent with his three-point shooting. And this year, a lot of emphasis is doing pretty well. And now underneath, a shot good by Cale Jones. Off the bench for two points. So Coach Fontana's got six points off his bench. And it's 24 to 11. Dowling with 23 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Shot clock turned off, Jimmy. Well, Centennial's uh, making their hay right now, attacking the basket. All their points except free throws come around the rim. And uh, so they're getting to the basket on the Maroons. Here is Cap Capola with the basketball, guarded by Welsh. And we've got an offensive foul called on Dowling. That was away from the ball, I believe. Moving screen, I believe they call on Allier as, as he's trying to get uh, uh, other shooters open, just uh, didn't set his feet on the screen. So Allier Agao with his first foul. That's a 14th foul on Dowling. Centennial with it four seconds ago, and Winkle has the ball off his foot, and they're going to get a reach-in foul on Dowling. That'll be two free throws coming for Centennial. As the foul is on Nick, Va uh, excuse me, foul is on Ryan Kleppe, his first, and that'll be two free throws coming for Luke Winkle. Calling yeah. the foul on Capo Maddox Capola on this as they uh, was trying to slow down Luke Winkle, but to your point, five fouls. Uh, in, in any quarter, uh, draws a two-shot uh, free throw. 2.1 seconds remaining. Winkle's first free throw short. Oh, Centennial, one for seven at the line. Wow. 71% free throw shooter on the year is Winkle. One for second free throw, no good. Ball goes out of bounds, and 
Are they going to put time back on? Officials eye each other, and I think they're going to say the quarter is over. Yes. So we've come to the end of the first quarter here at the Dowling Gym. The score, Dowling Catholic 24. And fourth-ranked Ankeny Centennial 11 alongside Jimmy Cattaddle and Mark Amadell. And along with CISN, Iowa Catholic Radio's coverage here of Central Iowa Metro League Basketball continues as we'll move to the second quarter following this break. Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Up to $15,000 on new Ram 2500s. Up to $12,500 on new Ram 1500 Laramies. 0% for 72 months on new Ram 1500 Bighorns. Up to $7,000 on the 2023 Durango. And new 2023 Jeep Renegades starting at $26,990. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Discounts off MSRP. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Second quarter underway. Dowling with the ball first. The Maroons lead 24 to 11. We'll get our first quarter statistics here when we get a moment. Mark Amadale, Jimmy Cataldo. I can tell you this, Dowling was three of four at the free throw line. And Centennial just one of six at the line. Jimmy? Well, it, it continued uh, uh, from the field. The Maroons go three of four from the field. Five of eight from three. Three rebounds, no turnovers. Centennial goes five of seven from the field. O oh of six. From three point range, four uh, rebounds, and two turnovers. Dowling with the basketball. Here is Cataldo with it. Dante dribbles in to a double coverage, gets the Kleppy for three. Good. Corner three by Ryan Kleppy. That's his second three of the night and his first two threes of the year. And the Maroons increase their lead at 27 11. Maroons are finding success from that left uh, baseline shot. And uh, Kleppy uh, on top of Southern are finding some nice shots in that spot. Now a steal by Dowling as they lob it inside to Cale Jones. He has it taken away from him. The Maroons create another turnover or cause another turnover. Here's Kleppy dribbling baseline. He's double team. Kicks it out to Capola. Dowling with their starting five. Capola, Cataldo, Southern. And here's Broderick for three, and it's good. Broderick with his first field goal of the night. He's got five points. And the Maroons out to a 30-11 to 11 lead. Maroons are 7 of 10 from three-point range in the game right now, 70%. Uh, 21 of their 30 points have come from the three-point arc. Dowling by 19, dribble driving the lane. Vasquez, his shot no good. Tip no good that time by Cale Jones. Rebound, Broderick. Joe in the front court. Leaves it for Coppola for three. Good! Joey Coppola with his 11th point, and the Maroons are up 33 to 11 with 6.20 to go in the second quarter. It's so important that they stay composed, play throughout the game because the hot shooting can't last around, but right now it's second charge taken by Joey Coppola through this game. Just 20. finds himself uh, set uh, right underneath the basket, draws a charge. 22 point lead for Dowling and a, and a foul called on Centennial. That's on Cale Jones. Basket was no good, and Dowling by 22 here with six minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, you know, it's just smart being a, a, a small guard. You know you can't contest at the rim. Get your feet set, see if you can take a charge, and that's what Joey uh, does a great job of doing. Here's Kleppy through traffic, and they're going to get him for a clear out with his right elbow. So Ryan Kleppy with the offensive foul as they reset the uh, fouls. Kleppy with his first foul. 33 to 11, Dowling by 22 with just under six minutes to play. Here's Winkle underneath, his shot up, rolls off the rim, no good. Coppola with the rebound. Outlet pass to Dante Cataldo as Dowling stays with their five starters. Here's Cataldo in the lane, dribble drives, gets to Broderick, and his pass back to Cole Southern is out of bounds. For Centennial, will set their lineup. Nick Vasky still in there along with Luke Winkle in the guard court. Will Smith. Is the third guard in the post is Chase Shetty. And also in there is Connor Welsh. 
That's the Centennial lineup. Where'd Shuddy play in football? You remember game Shuddy was a that? tremendous tight end. That's and, what I thought. And then found some uh, success playing on the defensive line as uh, Centennial oh, continued to evolve and had some uh, injuries, but uh, played both sides of the ball pretty effectively. Yeah, good looking kid. And now in the lane, the shot falls for Centennial, and that's Will Smith with the left hand. That's his sixth point off the bench. And a foul on Dowling. Second foul on Southerd. That's uh, who they called it on. All right, Cole Southerd with two fouls and the free throw good by Smith. Centennial now two of seven at the free throw line tonight. 33-14 Dowling. Maroons in the front court. They go right to left in front of us. Here's Coppola, a head fake against Winkle. Back to Broderick, who's guarded by Shetty. Out to Cole Southerd. Southerd looking for... A cutter finds Broderick. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Kleppe with it. Guarded by Connor Welsh. Kleppe down the baseline. He shot up, leaves it short. Good defense by Welsh. Rebound comes out to Centennial. Welsh down court. Layup off the glass. Too strong. Rebound Kleppe. And he has a ball stolen away. Vasky has it. Nice job by uh, Connor Wells. Saved it from going over and back. It's the tempo that the Maroons <laughs> played that we've seen so far in uh, this young tenure of, of Justin Ironson. Very quick, very up-tempo, intense, uh, but uh, they got to limit turnovers, value its possessions. All right, 15 on the shot clock. Here's Shuddy backing in. Leaves it for Vasquez in the right baseline. Pull-up jumper in the lane. Good. Nick Vasquez with his first two points tonight. Comes in averaging 12 points, eight rebounds, and it's 33-16. Dowling with the lead as we approach the four-minute mark. Here's Cataldo driving baseline and shoots and scores, but right around Vasky. And Dante Cataldo with his first two-point. Good recognition such, there. Such a quick move, and he has such a quick first step. And you know, I stress him so often to take the ball to the basket because he creates such issues with his speed. Wait a minute. You're, you're coaching in I basketball. I, I, Would you let Jenny take care of that? You know, Swain, <laughs> Coach Swain, Swain is yes, sitting at home Swain. rolling his eyes saying, just stay out of it, will you? Amen. 35-16 Dowling, 25 on the shot clock. Ball slapped out of bounds by the Maroons. And Centennial inbounds the ball. Here's Vasky with it in the corner. Guarded by Coppola, coming off a ball screen, won't shoot it. Now they try to get underneath with Smith. They do, and lay up good. A little give and go there, a little two-man game. And Will Smith now leading Centennial and scoring with nine points. Well, it's becoming a four-on-four -four game because the Maroons are face guarding Luke Winkle wherever he goes. And uh, Centennial's not doing bad in their offensive sets, getting the ball to the basket. It's just the Maroons' hot shooting has really uh, uh, extended the leads here. All the era gal, number 33 in the Dowling lineup, along with Nick Frerichs, number three, and also in there, number 13, Maddox Coppola. So the Maroons going to their bench. Now here's a corner three by Coppola, hits the front iron, no good. Rebound cleared out of there by Nick Vasky and Centennial with three minutes to play, 35-18. And underneath... A whistle and a foul before the shot on Dowling. As they're going to get number... Allier, I believe, is his second. 33, yes, okay. He said 23, 33. Allier Agal with his second foul. And it'll be out of bounds to Centennial. And Lucas Paoli coming in for the Maroons. Number 15, a six-foot junior. Didn't see him play much on Tuesday night. Might have been the latter stages of the fourth quarter. And he'll take the place of Cole Southern. Watch a little bit of Lucas over the last, uh, or the first three games. Handles the ball well, is, is, is a nice uh, a basketball player. He's going to find his minutes. How about that steal by Coppola? That's Maddox Coppola, number 13 on the steal. 2.40 to go here in the second quarter, 35-18. Dowling, Coppola with it. This is his brother, Joey. Get there. Underneath. Get there. Tries to feed Frerichs, and now Dowling just running there their weave. Now reverse pass by... Maddox, or rather by Lucas Paoli, is thrown away by Centennial. And a foul on Dowling as Centennial heads the other way. And free throws coming for Will Smith, who's done a nice job off the bench for Centennial. Foul will be on Alier Agal, his third. That'll be the 14th foul on Dowling here. So Centennial is going to shoot two here, but they'll be shooting two the rest of the quarter. That's Run's got to do a better job understanding the, you know, their defense and their intensity around the defense. Not drawing the fouls. Allier, a little in, uh, uh, inexperienced. He's a tall, lengthy kid. Just hold your, uh, hold your ground, stay tall, make the offensive player, in this case Smith, uh, make a play over him. And 
and uh, threw a lot of contact there. Both free throws good by Will Smith. He's got 11 points. 30-second timeout on the floor with 220, 224 left to go in the second quarter. Dowling 35, Hanke Centennial 20. Let's take a look at scoring. And for Centennial, Connor Welsh with three points. Chase Shetty averaging 16 points, 13 rebounds, no points. Joey Oki, no points, averaging 12 points, two rebounds. Nick Vasky, two points, averaging 12 points, eight rebounds. And Luke Winkle held the two points, averaging 18 points, seven rebounds, and seven assists. So the Dowling defense doing very well in this first half, Jimmy. The leading scorer for Centennial, Will Smith, with 11 points off the bench for the Jags. Off the bench, and I, I, the Maroons are doing a great job defensively across the board, handling Luke Winkle, and, and you got to keep him at bay as long as you can. And right now they're doing a great job face guarding, but right now no answer for Will Smith with 11 points. Uh, and, and all of those have been uh, taking the ball to the basket. So the Maroons have to do a little bit better job keeping Will Smith uh, away from attacking. Joey Capola leading the way for Dowling with 11 points. Nine points for Cole Southard. Five points for Joe Broderick and six points for Ryan Kleppe. Dowling with the ball with 2.10 to go here in the half. Here's Capola with it in the quarter and the ball is, goes off the leg of an Ankeny Centennial defender as Kleppe returns to the Dowling lineup replacing Lucas Paoli. Yeah, Maroons have to understand, take the shots that Ankeny's giving you. And right now they're, they're moving the ball well. They, they have room to take the ball to the basket, but they're working the ball around to a three-point shot, believing that, hey, that's where we're making our hay, that's where we're hot. But they got to take when you get it. Two-point right, shots. Ferg's coming off the ball screen by Broderick. There it is. As Dowling now three on the shot clock. In the lane is Ferg's, launches a shot, it's no good. And a shot clock violation as Broderick got the rebound. Turnover number five for the Maroons in the second quarter. And and it's allowing Ankeny Centennial just to fall back a little bit uh, into this game, just down 15 now with the ball. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Skeffick and Formal Wear, the Catholic Tuition Organization, and Klein Electric. Jags will inbound the ball. Dowling showing full court pressure as Vasky inbounds it. Gets it to Welsh, now over to Winkle. Luke Winkle 0 for 2 at the free throw line, two points with a minute 35 to go in the first half. Now the Jags, a long three. It's no good by Will Smith. Rebound chased down by Broderick. Great hustle by Joe. Outlet pass goes to Kleppe. Ryan doesn't see a seam, so he'll kick it out. And the Maroons will start their offense. Maddox Capola out to Ryan Kleppe. Corner three by Capola is good. Joey Capola with 14 points. That's his third three of the night. And the Maroons open up an 18-point lead, 38-20, after having a 22-point lead earlier. Here's a long three. It's no good by Vasky. Rebound Dowling. That's Broderick with it. Joe with it. Nearly lost it. And now does. Stolen away by Will Smith. Down court. And a slam dunk by Nick Vasky for his fourth point, 38-22. I don't want to see Joey uh, 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 Broderick uh, handling the ball that far outside the three-point arc. And... I think that's what's being discussed with them, and stay where you, you make your hay. And we've got a reach-in foul right in front of the Centennial bench. Broderick had the ball, and reaching in was Will Smith, who's had quite the first half for Centennial with 11 points off the bench. Cataldo returns to the Dowling lineup. Nick Ferrich will sit down. So will Maddox Coppola as Joey Coppola in. Final 34 seconds of the first half. Shot clock turned off. Maroons brought in their three-point shooting with Southern, uh, Kleppe, Capola. Here's Capola, guarded by Winkle. This is a pretty good matchup. 20 seconds remaining. Here's Kleppe, guarded by Vasky between the circles. Dowling spreads the four. They go to their 1-4 set. Kleppe, top of the key, and the corner goes to Southern. Seven seconds to go. Here's Broderick with it. Four seconds ago, Joe to the basket. His shot up and no good. And rebounded by Chase Shuddy. And we've come to halftime with Dowling Catholic leading 38-22 over Ankeny Centennial as the Maroons jumped out to a 24-11 first quarter lead and outscored Centennial 14-11 here in the second quarter. And Jimmy, the, the Jags, and Dowling playing a pretty much up-tempo game. 38 points at halftime, 
our score. And uh, your thoughts before we just, uh, start totaling up the uh, numbers? Just hot shooting by Dowling throughout that first uh, first half. Three point shooting was uh, was critical for the Maroons, and and uh, you know turnovers got them on the, in the second quarter with six, but uh, allowing Inky Centennial to call back. Maroons are doing a great job keeping uh, Winkle at bay, who we believe that uh, was going to come out and, and, and shoot lights out. But Maroons face guarding him throughout each set, uh, but has allowed Will Smith to uh, to come out and be an offensive star for the Centennial uh, Jaguars with 11 in the first half. Yeah, Will Smith leading the way for Centennial. He has 11 points at halftime, four points for Nick Vasky, three points for Connor Wells for Centennial, two points for Cale Jones, Chase Shetty, and... Luke Winkle with two points, and Chase Shetty yet to score. So let's look at the scoring for Centennial, who went three. It went Jags went three, or rather four, out of ten at the free throw line in the first half. Dowling was led by Joey Coppola with 14 points at halftime, nine points for Cole Southard, six points for Ryan Kleppe, five points for Joe Broderick and two points each for Dante Cataldo and Nick Frerichs. Maroons were three of four at the free throw line. We're going to take a two-minute break at halftime along our network lines. Dowling 38, Yankee Centennial 22. In the girls' contest, it was Dowling Catholic defeating Yankee Centennial 60-34 to in a top-six matchup, and we'll be joined at halftime on Iowa Catholic Radio by head coach Kristen Meyer and one of her players, along with Jim Cataldo, Mark Amadale, will return after this two-minute break here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snack. Ask Joe, why do you often say West Side Auto instead of West Side Auto Pros? Because I think I shouldn't have to tell you we're the pros. That's what you expect. Many places will tell you that they're honest and will fix your car right the first time and that they're friendly. Well, duh, isn't that what you expect? How about this? I'll put my claims in writing. The Westside Auto Lifetime Warranty on any repairs we do. That's an offer no other auto repair shop in this area is doing. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. All right, welcome back to the Dowling Catholic Gym. Halftime score of the boys contest. Dowling 38, Yankee Centennial 22, Mark Amadale, Jimmy Cataldo, now joined by head coach Kristen Meyer from the Dowling Girls program. Earlier tonight, Dowling Girls defeating Yankee Centennial 60 to 34. Coach, welcome. Glad you had time to come down and visit with us. I know autographs, posters, uh, NBA on Tuesday night. You were you're very busy between games, but we appreciate having you and welcome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we had our NBC teams here, the, the youth girls teams, and they were very excited to get some autographs on, on Tuesday. So had to just make sure we had some markers and, and posters and be ready to go. Our, our girls did great with them. And one autograph they didn't get because you sent uh, uh, your, your assistant coach, Audrey Faber, up here. So I understand. <laughs> I know yeah, who didn't but, get an autograph. You know, so, someone had to take one for the team, and, and Audrey <laughs> drew the short straw. Who's, the gal, who's this gal sitting next to you? I haven't seen her in a while. I mean, is she uh, 
I thought she graduated. It's been around oh, so no. long. Oh, we, no, we get Layla this year and next year. Don't you be sending her off too early here. <laughs> Layla Tritton, just a junior and a captain this year. Congratulations. Yep, thank you. Welcome to the uh, broadcast. Welcome to halftime. And uh, a little different, Coach uh, Meyer, from Tuesday night's performance tonight. Yes, Valley played a tremendous game. But I re that game tonight reminded me of the Dowling of old that went through that long winning streak last year. And you ride the ship right before Christmas break. And that was a bounce back tonight. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we agree. We got in the locker room after the game, and, and we said the same thing. We're back. We're back. This is this is our team, and I think Tuesday, you know, not to make excuses, I don't know if we were a little tired from our trip up to Minnesota or just a little flat, but, uh, and Valley played well, as you said. They shot well. They played well, but, but tonight was much more representative of, of our team. Layla Tritton, a junior. Yep. Hard to believe that. It seems like she's a senior. I won't. I won't graduate her. <laughs> I'm keeping her. Is that true? What's what changed since Tuesday night? Because uh, Valley played very. Valley reminded me. Uh, you reminded me of what, how Valley played against Dowling Tuesday night is yeah. where you played tonight. Is that true? Yeah, I think obviously we were up in Minnesota for a while and we got used to the competition there and we came back and we knew the teams we played in Minnesota were really good. So uh, I feel like we kind of we didn't come back thinking like oh these teams aren't as good or whatever. We were just used to playing tough competition and we kind of came out. I feel like we started kind of slow, and they kind of took the hammer to us, and we didn't really know what hit us. But then yesterday at practice, we're like, "That's not acceptable. Like, that's not how we play basketball." So then we decided we we came out with the power this time. Well, you sure did, and it took it right to their leading scorer, Maya Crawford, in foul trouble. If she had to sit on the bench, she came back and got four points in the fourth quarter. It started with defense, and, and coach, you got to be proud of that because this Centennial team that came in averaged 64 points through three games. They gave up 30. Well, you put up uh, 60 points on them and held them to 34. So you answered two questions. You were able to score and defend against a very good team. And Scott DeYoung's team is, are always good, as you know. Yeah, I thought defensively we were much more locked in. Uh, we executed our game plan a little bit better and, and did a nice job just, you know, getting the gaps, getting the help. Um, and, and then, to be honest, I was a little more proud of us even offensively because usually Centennial teams don't give up more than 40 points very often. Right. Uh, but we had a little better ball movement on offense, didn't turn the ball over as much, a little bit more patient, and then once once shots started falling, uh, life, life gets a lot better. Well, it does. Uh, made shots help out a lot, but uh, you, your bench tonight, you know, Macy yeah. Herndon had a, a few points, the, uh, several baskets Tuesday night. She comes in tonight and has eight points off the bench, and that's a nice compliment for the starting five to get a rotation, and also uh, Leah Brock, who also came in, so your bench has come in to play a little. Yeah, I thought Macy Harden came in and played great, both offensively, defensively, hit, hit a couple threes. You know, Layla contributed tonight. Um, Ellie scored, Katie scored, just tried to kind of spread it out a little bit, because Ava can't do all the scoring for us all the time, and we have enough players that we can score from multiple positions. Vision with the head coach, Kristen Meyer of Dowling Catholic following the Dowling girls win over Ankeny Centennial 60 to 34 in game one of our doubleheader tonight. We're also joined by Layla Tritton, co-leading scorer with that Zedeker girl with 14 <laughs> points. Uh, did you uh, let Ava know that you can also score and uh, you, you matched her tonight, uh, Layla? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure practice gets interesting uh, with that, but... Uh, you know, you got the two Moeller sisters out there, and you inserted Katie in the starting lineup, and she played much better than Tuesday night, and, you know, you're at home. And remember last year, Dowling was on the road five of your first six games. Matter yeah. of fact, you got one game moved just so you could be home. Otherwise, yep. you've been on the road. But now you start out at home, and that's much better. And how does this prepare you for Tuesday's game? And Coach Meyer at number one Johnston, a team that uh, – you snapped their winning streak last year at uh, at their place. How, how, yeah, how, we're excited about to play that? Johnson on Tuesday. I'll say this: I feel a lot better after this game than I did after our game Tuesday against Valley. And Johnson will come out. We, I haven't started watching too much film yet. They're deep. They, they've got a lot of players offensively, defensively. I think our girls will have a little confidence back, and we're excited to play in one of our few road games uh, before break, right. which is great. We'll go over to Johnston and, and play hard, and hopefully it'll be a fun one. All right. Well, thank you both for uh, being on. And, uh, Coach, anybody you want to give a shout-out to? I know people in Old Wine sometimes yeah, listen. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing my parents up in Old Wine are watching. Uh, they appreciate the broadcast. and know that 
Uh, you guys do a great job calling the game, so we just appreciate you streaming the game. All right, Layla, you got a shout out to anybody? Um, I'll do my teammates and my grandparents. And where are your grandparents at? They here? Uh, we got some in Remsen, Iowa, and then uh, some from Decorah, but the Decorah ones actually came down tonight. I didn't know they were coming. So they're not too far away from Old Wine. Little northeast nope. Iowa. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much. Best of luck Tuesday night at Johnson, and thanks thank for you. joining us. All right, thank Kristen you. Meyer and Layla Tritton joined us here at halftime. Dowling boys leading Ankeny Centennial 38-22 at halftime. We'll be back in one minute for the start of the second half on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym, underway in the second half. 38-22, Dowling with the lead over number four, Ankeny Centennial. Mark Amadillo alongside Jimmy Cataldo as Dowling has the ball underneath. Broderick's shot is no good, and the rebound cleared out of there by the Jaguars. And we'll get our first half statistics here when we get a moment. Ankeny now isolates Vasky on the right side. Shot up and no good. Too strong. Nice defense that time by go, Joey go, Capola. Go, go. He couldn't do much but stand there, and uh, he overshot the... But Joey's just trying to take charge just whenever he can. I mean, he, he understands what kind of player he is. Capola for three, top of the key, and it's no good. Rebound cleared out of there by Will Smith, who had a very good first half, and now we've got a blocking foul called on Kleppy, and Burns will pick up the foul. Boy, it looked really it looked like Ryan uh, moved his feet well enough to square up on that contact. And see, Coach Einerton's not too happy with the call, but, uh, but either way, good good play by both uh, uh, Smith and uh, by Kleppy. Now Centennial with the ball, a shot up and good. The basket will count and a foul on Dowling. So Centennial now attacks the glass in the paint after trailing at halftime by trailing by as many as 22 points. Follows on Dowling's Ryan Kleppe, his third. So he gets foul number two and three right away. Back to back, and uh, yeah, it's a tough one. I, I, Ryan, Ryan's trying to keep his his ground, and but uh, gets his feet up in the air and draws contact, and they're going to call that likely a block most times. Come on, throw no up. good by Centennial. 38-24 is our score. Okay. Wow. Three-pointer up and good by Dowling. The Maroons answer back. Southern with his 4-3 of the game and uh, finding that left baseline shot, and that's where he made his hand in the first half. He's got 12, and now back comes Centennial. And Luke Winkle with his first three of the night. He's got five points. Interesting to see if Luke gets, gets going offensively. The Maroons did a great job in the first half face guarding him throughout, but strong 20-foot jump shot by, by Luke Winkle. It's the bottom of the net. 41-27 underneath is Broderick's shot. It's no good with the left hand. Rebound Winkle. Winkle down court. Layup, reverse layup is good. He went right around Southern for the basket. And the Jags starting to light it up. Winkle with five of his seven points here in the third quarter. 41-29. The Dowling lead is 12. And now a timeout called by the Maroons and head coach Justin Einertsen. 5.43 to go here in the third quarter. 41-29 is our score. This will be a full timeout. We'll take it with them here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. 
Our year-end red tag event is going on now at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Every new and used vehicle is tagged with one low price. Up to $15,000 on new Ram 2500s. Up to $12,500 on new Ram 1500 Laramies. 0% for 72 months on new Ram 1500 Bighorns. Up to $7,000 on a 2023 Durango. And new 2023 Jeep Renegades starting at $26,990. Incredible year-end savings at DeArmond Automotive Knoxville. Discounts off MSRP. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym out of the timeout. Puffy down the lane for the Maroons. A shot up and no good. Actually blocked by Centennial. And a rebound comes out to the Jags. They work underneath and a shot off the glass good by Connor Welsh. Who now not, has five points. Maroons not getting back on defense, and that was an issue against Valley uh, Tuesday night. On, on all made shots, Valley got out and ran. That's what Centennial was doing. Nobody's getting back contesting those layups. Here's Broderick with the basketball, and they're going to have a reach-in foul called on Centennial. And I believe they're going to get uh, Welsh for the foul. That'll be his third, and it is. So Connor Welsh for Centennial picks up foul number three. First team foul on Centennial here in the third quarter as they reset the fouls every quarter now. Two fouls on Dowling here in the third. Here's Broderick with it, top of the key. Hands it off to Dominic. Dante Cataldo over to Coppola. Joey with it to Kleppe. Dowling with their starting five. Capola down the lane, the shot off the glass, good. Nice move by Dante Cataldo right over Chase Shetty. Just, that's Dante's game, is, is taking the ball hard to the basket. He's, he's quick, he, he's athletic, can jump. Just got to see more of it. But, uh, you know, you're going to try to find and see what, what Maroon's player is going to step up and make big shots as, uh, as these games starts going. Baskey for three, no good. Dowling with the rebound and a run out, no good. As the layup by Southern is no good. And a loose ball foul called on Centennial and Will Smith. That'll be his second foul. Out of bounds to Dowling. They say the foul was committed on the rebound. Look for a set play here for the Maroons. Maybe getting the ball somewhere uh, for Broderick or, or Kleppe around the basket. <laughs> Sarah Machat had to retrieve the ball in the women's locker room. <laughs> 2023. Nobody's going to go in there. <laughs> Official wasn't going in there. Nope. <laughs> he got Sarah to do it. Now here's Cataldo for three. It's up and no good. Gets his own rebound. In the corner to Coppola for three. It's in and out. No good. Fight for the rebound. And taken away by Joey Oki. Strong rebound by Joey. Here's Winkle with it. Guarded by Cataldo. 43-31 Dowling. Now in the corner. Here's Vasky for three. It's no good. Rebound Coppola and Dowling. Joey with it. In the front court. Four minutes to play. Dowling by 12. Reverse layup by Coppola, up and good, the basket will count, and a foul on Nick Vasky. What a move by Coppola in the reverse layup. Incredible move by, by, by Coppola, he's taking the ball to the basket baseline, I thought he was going to throw it across court to a uh, to a wide open Cole Southern, but then does an up and under reverse layup, incredible move by Coppola in finishing uh, as he gets fouled. Will Smith has picked up his third foul, and he's Centennial's leading scorer with 11 points off the bench tonight. Capola with his 16th point. And the second free, the free throw is good. And one. Little knuckleball off the back of the rim. Good. 17 on, points for Capola. Kleppi will have a seat on the bench. Smart move by, by Coach Einerson getting Kleppi out. Three fouls still midway through the third quarter. Don't want to see him picking up his, his fourth. Here's Winkle with it. Dribble handoff to Vasky in the lane. He's shot up and good. The basket will count. A foul on Dowling. And they're going to get... I believe Coppola for the foul, we'll see. And it is, Joey will pick up foul number two. And free throws coming for Centennial and Nick Vasky, who has eight points tonight and an and one here. Nice Friday night crowd here at the Dowling Gym. These two teams will meet next month. And the free throw good by Vasky. 
crowd's almost as intense as the game on the court. Nine points for Vasky, 46-34. Dowling's lead is 12. Maroons have led by as many as 22 tonight in the first half. Centennial has answered that after halftime. Broderick with it. Top of the key to Frerichs. Mick with it, looking inside. Now gets the Coppola. A head fake. Coppola down the lane. A little teardrop shot up. No good. Coppola with the rebound. Has it stripped away by Luke Winkle. Winkle in the front court. Down the lane. His shot up and good. Strong move by Winkle. Headed to St. Cloud State next year, and he showed his strength. 46-36, the Dowling lead is 10. Broderick with it, back to Coppola, in the corner to Cataldo for three, good! Hey, he didn't hit that shot Tuesday night, but he hit it tonight. Hey, that's where the Maroons are making big shots in these games, and you saw it against Valley, you're seeing it a little bit tonight, and big shot uh, by Dante uh, when they need it the most. 49-36, Dowling by 13, Jags with it. Underneath, they get it to Vasky. His shot on the baseline, no good, and a blocking foul on Dowling. I don't know how Nick Frakes can get any more set than how he was, and there's a charge in the first half, and for some reason, you know, on, on Nick Frakes draws the block, and then uh, he also got uh, a Kleppy earlier on the block. So two free throws coming for Nick Vasky for Ankeny Centennial. Vasky tonight with nine points. First free throw good. Tonight's game on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network brought to you in part by Klein Electric, Construction Professionals, and the Catholic Tuition Organization. Dante Cataldo and Nick Frerichs will check out. Checking back in is Cole Southerd for the Maroons and Ryan Kleppe after having a break here, Jimmy. Vasky had 12 points the other night against uh, Urbandale. Hits his 11th, uh, still with two and a half minutes to go in the third. Baskey knocks them both down. 49-38, Dowling by 11. Here's Kleppy with it. Rings are in their weave. They get it to Maddox Coppola, who also is in there, number 13. So both Coppola brothers are in there. Broderick underneath, and a whistle and a foul on the floor on Centennial. And that'll be the Jags' fourth foul, fourth team foul of the quarter. A lot, a lot of contact in the lane. Nothing called there as a... Uh, as you see, Joey Broderick having a little bit of frustrating night, sitting with five points, uh, coming off a 31-point game against Valley. But yet, uh, Joey uh, Broderick just got to find his way, his way to where he's going to hit high percentage shots in the lane. Cab Klingner in there for Centennial, 6'2 junior in for the first time. Here's Broderick, right elbow, who shot no good. Fight for the rebound, a loose ball foul on Maddox Capola. That'll be his second. Two fifteen to go, 49-38. Dowling with the lead. Five fouls on the Maroons. Can put uh, a Centennial on the line, shooting two with two minutes uh, and some change to go in the third, and that's where the Maroons have found themselves in many uh, in many uh, uh, examples last, uh, last Tuesday against Valley. Valley converting their free throws, see what Centennial does tonight. All right, Winkle at the free throw line. First free throw is good. It's a great strategy. I, you know, it's a way to claw back in these games. Two, two shots. Looking to break this thing down to a nine-point lead for the Maroons. And Winkle now in double figures. That's his camp point. And it's 49-40. Dallin's lead is now nine. Here's Kleppy in the front court with as we approach the two-minute mark. With it is Maddox Coppola. Out to Joey Coppola, his brother. Joey with it, guarded by Winkle. Out to Kleppy. Under two minutes to play here in the third quarter. Earlier tonight, the Dowling girls upset number two, Ankeny Centennial, 60 to 34 in game one. And now Southern for three. It's up and no good. It's the uh, guy wire support along with the back of the backboard, the bar, rather. And it's a dead ball out of bounds to Centennial. Minute 44 to go in the third quarter. Centennial's just finding the shooters for the Maroons. Getting on, on Southern, finding Coppola. Somebody else needing to step up at this time when you look at uh, Maddox Coppola and Ryan Kleppe on the court. Cab Klingner in there, number 20, running the point. Long three up and no good by Joey Oakey. Rebound Broderick. Outlet pass to Joey Coppola with a minute 25 to go here in the third quarter. Both teams have stayed man-to-man -man defensively throughout the night. We haven't seen any zone. Underneath Broderick. Double team, triple team on the block. And we're going to get a jump ball call. Possession arrow favors Dowling. 
A lot of contact in the lane, and, and you know, it's it's going back and forth. Officials, I think, are doing a, a pretty good job tonight, letting uh, just some, th some things go, and but a lot of contact around the lane right now. Did you ever make your point about the high school regulation court versus the uh, longer you know, college you court? Yeah, with the three guys we had the other night, including we were all, me, I mean, the, two of them were pretty quality guys. It was guys. so hard to get points made and let them stick. <laughs> a lot of text. I thought it was my, a great point. Well, you didn't. Ex well, you know, explain it for our listeners. This is a Friday night audience, different audiences. A whistle <laughs> and a foul on Centennial. Capole at the line. For the point Dowling. being made is is Dowling plays on an eighty foot, four, eighty four foot uh, uh, court, which regulation is a regulation high school high court. school court. Yes, right. But you're seeing all these new facilities being built, and 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 the courts that are being put in these facilities are are college and NBA regulation courts, which is ninety four. The point being with all that is the space. You know, you get these bigger, faster kids. You know, at, at Dowling, the spacing isn't as great as some of these other other high schools that are going with bigger courts. 57 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. 51-40, Dowling by 11 over Centennial. Here's Winkle. Step back, three, good. Nice move by Winkle. He's got 13 points. And that's his second three of the night. And all of a sudden, it's 51-43. Centennial now trailing by eight. And Winkle with 13. Here's Capola down the lane. Layup up and no good. Drew the foul. And I think they're going to get Shuddy for the foul. We'll see. And they do. So Chase Shuddy with his first foul of the night for Wink Centennial. Winkle has seven points in his third quarter alone. Yeah. He held, held at bay in the first half, but coming alive here in the, se in the second half with seven in the third quarter. Capola's free throw good. Joey with 20 points tonight to lead Dowling. Southard with 12, also in double figures for the Maroons. Second free throw, no good. Rebound Centennial, 30 seconds to play. Here in the third quarter, shot clock turned off. Link won the front court. Joey Oki, number 12, also Cab Klingner, number 20 with the ball. Chase Shetty, number 10, and the left side and Cale Jones number 35 on the right side as Centennial spreads the court final 10 seconds here's Winkle underneath pull up jumper in the baseline too strong no good offensive rebound Shuddy and now a three pointer at the horn by Oki is no good rebound Capola and we've come to the end of the third quarter with the score Dowling Catholic 52 Ankeny Centennial 43 alongside Jimmy Cataldo Mark Amadale will return to the Dowling Gym for the fourth quarter here on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Welcome back to the Dowling Catholic Gym. We start the fourth quarter. Dowling leading 52-43. Mark Amadale, Jimmy Cataldo. The Maroons 7 of 9 at the free throw line through three quarters. Centennial 11 out of 17. Jimmy, you got to look at some of the numbers before we get underway. Maroons uh, through three quarters for the game. 6 of 15 from the field, 40%. 11 of 19 from three-point range. Red hot, 57%. 15 rebounds and 7 turnovers for the Yankee Centennial Jaguars. 13 of 22 from the field. Uh, 2 of 14 from 3. 14%. 15 rebounds and 6 turnovers. Centennial outscoring Dowling in that third quarter. 21 to 14. After Dowling leading 24 to 11 at the end of the first quarter. Maroons outscore Centennial 14 to 11 in the second quarter. Dowling led 38-22 at half. And Jags. Outscoring Dowling 21 
to 14. A whistle and a foul to start the fourth quarter on Dowling's Joey Coppola. That is his third foul. Coppola with 20 points leading Dowling. The Maroons got to be smart in the, in, in the fourth quarter. They found themselves with five plus uh, fouls against Valley, putting them on the line where they scored most of their points in the fourth quarter. And so the Maroons really have to focus on playing great defense and try to limit your fouls. Play this game court to court. And Valley on Friday night, or Tuesday night rather, outscored Dowling 16 to nine in that second quarter, or third, fourth quarter after Maroons controlled the first three. Second free throw is good by Centennial. Hands up, hands up. It was Vasky with 13 points. As he makes them both, okay, Dowling with the ball. Now a long three by Coppola. Good, nothing but the bottom of the net. Net has Nick Vasky tried to close out on him. Great job, great job in the triangular with with Coppola, uh, uh, Broderick, and, and, and Dante. Is that they're working the ball back and forth, found Coppola wide open, and then Winkle taking the ball hard to the basket with his left and converting. Winkle now with 15 points. Yes. He was held to two points at halftime. Now Kleppi in the corner for three, up and good. Gets the Jimmy Catello roll on the it's, corner. I tell you, it's the home roll. I hits the front of the rim, goes up about three <laughs> feet, and then comes back down inside. Uh, that's the home roll that you'd like to hope to see. Kleppi with his third three of the night. He's got nine points. First basket of the second half. Here's a shot in the lane, no good by Vasky. Rebound Dowling. The Maroons turn it over underneath, and a blocking foul called as... Shuddy comes away with it, and Kleppi commits the foul, and that'll be his fourth. Four fouls on Kleppi. That's tough because Kleppi's come out tonight and, and, and really being an offensive presence with nine, and in a game when baskets are going to be big here in the fourth quarter, you don't want to lose Kleppi to foul trouble. And again, the Maroons are putting their opponent on the line here in the fourth quarter. That's the second team foul on Dowling. Stops the clock, and Shuddy, who has been scoreless, held scoreless tonight, will have two free throws. First one is good. Tonight's game of the Iowa Catholic Radio Network brought to you in part by Bozen the Florist, Ashworth Vision Clinic, and Construction Professionals. Mark Amadil, Jimmy Catalwo tonight here on Iowa Catholic Radio, and we simulcast with CISN as the second free throw by Shuddy is good. Now he now has two points. Here's Capola inside to Broderick. He shot up and no good, and we're going to get a foul called, and that's a pretty good foul that's called on Will Smith as he almost undercut Broderick, didn't let him come down. Well, I, think, I think that's the call that they're making. I mean, if Broderick is, is going to shoot a straight-up jump shot, and where Will Smith keeps his ground actually came underneath him a little bit and didn't allow yep. any room for Broderick to come down. Tremendous call might be the call of the night. Broderick hits his first free throw. Joe with five points tonight after opening up with 31 points and 17 rebounds Tuesday night in his first varsity game. First one good, second one on the way good. Broderick with seven points tonight. 60 to 48, Dowling by 12. And now Centennial with the ball. Winkle with it. Leaves it for Vasky. And draws the foul. And he'll go to the line for two. Fouls on Broderick, his second. Three straight times down the court. Centennial has found himself at the line. And it all started with, with Joey uh, you know, coming around for his defense. Left his feet on a three-point shot. Vasky taking the ball hard to the rim and drawing the foul on Broderick. Vasky misses the first free throw. He's got 13 points. Second one on its way. And good. Got four fouls, Will. Be careful. 14 points now for Nick Vasky. Come on, guys. Let's go, D. 60 to 49, Dowling by 11. Broderick in the lane, he's double team as Welsh came in to help. In the corner is Capola, dribbles baseline, is cut off, loses the ball, it's stolen away by Connor Welsh. Capola knocked down in the under the basket, now getting back on defense. Here is Winkle, fakes the three, now attacks the rim. In the lane, shot up and good. He went right around Cataldo and Capola in a timeout centennial, and this will be a full timeout. We'll take it with them. Our score. Dowling Catholic 60, Yankee Centennial 51, 543 left to go, fourth quarter, back in one minute here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and CISN. 
Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Shot and Kirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Shot and Kirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Friday night, high school girls and boys basketball. First Friday night doubleheader of the season. December 1st, 2023. Mark Amadale alongside Jimmy Cataldo for this boys contest. Earlier tonight, the Dowling girls, a 60-34 winner over Anthony Centennial. Now Dowling with the ball underneath. Ryan Kleppi's shot is no good. Rebound Centennial. Now Centennial. Here's Smith for three. It's no good. And the rebound Cole Southern in Dowling. Guarded in the backcourt by Connor Welsh. Here's Capole in the front court. This is Joey. In the corner goes the Cataldo, and he threw it away. Turnover against Dowling. Just Runes by nine, Jimmy, and uh, they led by as many as 22, and that is slowly deteriorating. Well, it, it's it's a little bit of the inexperience of the Maroons. Is you know how who's going to be a leader here? Slow things down. Make sure each possession is a premium. And right now the Maroons aren't finding any leadership right now. Now Winkle gives it up to Nick Vasky in the lane. His shot no good. Tip no good. Rebound Kleppy. Kleppy has it for the Maroons. Dowling in the front court. Kleppy down the lane. Kicks in the corner to Southern for three. Good. Cole Southern with his fifth three of the night. He's got 15. One of the few times he's been left open in the second half. Uh, as Centennial has found him on the offensive end. But give it to Cole for hitting down a, a wide open shot uh, when the Maroons need it the most. Whistling a foul on Dante Cataldo. That'll be his first foul. 63-51, Dowling by 12. 4.37 left to go, fourth quarter. Cataldo will check out. Checking in will be Nick Frerichs. Frerichs enters the game with two points. Centennial inbounds the ball to Vasky. Or to Winkle, rather. Winkle in the corner for three. Good. Luke Winkle starting to heat up. He's got 18 points. On, had two at halftime. And 63-54 Dowling. Here's Coppola. Turnaround shot in the lane. Good. Oh. Joey Coppola. Strong move. He's got 25 tonight. Help. 65-54 Dowling. And now Winkle in the lane. He draws the foul. Frerichs will pick it up. That'll be his second. Team foul number five. If that's the fifth, it'll be two shots the rest of the way for Centennial on every Dowling foul, and it will be. That's four minutes. That's, that's four minutes and some change into the fourth quarter. That's a lot of time that every foul that Dowling commits now is a two-shot uh, free throw for Centennial. Yeah, the new rule in high school, girls and boys basketball, two shots when you reach the fifth foul at the quarter. Winkle's free throw good. I got him for 22 points tonight. Second one on the way, good. 23 points for Luke. Headed to St. Cloud State up in Minnesota to play basketball next year. Dowling underneath, they get it to Broderick, and a reach-in foul will be called on Will Smith, and he has just fouled out, and that was, at one time, Centennial's leading scorer. That is five on him. He'll foul out with 11 points with 3.59 to go here in the fourth. Call play by, uh, by by Dowling there as Coppola taking the ball hard as he got contested. The play was finding Broderick attacking the basket and, and as doing so, caught Will Smith off guard a little bit defensively and drew the foul. Number five for Will Smith. and uh, He'll foul out with 11 points. Cleppy will sit down for Dowling as the Maroons make a substitution. Allier Agal, 6'8", senior, number 33, checks in.
So two shots coming for Joe Broderick. That's seven points tonight. Joe four for four at the line. 65-56, Dowling by nine. Second, first of two free throws is good. We're under He's gonna play, four you know, minutes, this is all, it, Not a ton of offensive stats going on in the fourth quarter as, every, as each team is, is finding themselves on the, on the free throw line, and Maroon's going to have to talk and figure out how they're going to play defense uh, the rest of this game. Full timeout called, four minutes to play, just under four minutes to play fourth quarter. We'll take a one-minute break here on Iowa Catholic Radio as Dowling leads Centennial 67-56, fourth quarter here in this boys' contest from the Dowling Gym on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Joe, why do you often say Westside Auto instead of Westside Auto Pros? Because I think I shouldn't have to tell you we're the pros. That's what you expect. Many places will tell you that they're honest and will fix your car right the first time and that they're friendly. Well, duh, isn't that what you expect? How about this? I'll put my claims in writing. The Westside Auto lifetime warranty on any repairs we do. That's an offer no other auto repair shop in this area is doing. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Over 1,300 vehicles on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. If we don't have it, you can build it. Newly expanded service department means we're hiring. See the openings on WaukeeChevy.com. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Free Godfather's Pizza. Begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. And we're back here at the Dowling Gym. Glad you could join us. Exciting Friday night of high school girls and boys basketball on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network as we simulcast with CISN. Mark Amadil, Jimmy Cataldo, 340 left to go, fourth quarter. Dowling hanging on to a 67-56 lead over Centennial. Underneath a shot no good by Cale Jones. Rebound Dowling and Broderick. Jones had to go around Oliguer. Corner three by Southern is no good. Fight for the rebound. And the ball goes out of bounds. And they'll give it to Centennial as Broderick was at the bottom of that pile, <laughs> as you would expect. Bruins holding on to an 11-point lead, trying not to have a repeat of what happened Tuesday well, night, it, 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 It's tough. I mean, how, how much do you play the, the clock down? Because time is, is, exactly. is not your friend right now, but taking a, uh, a shot on one pass. You know, but, but Cole's been hot, so it's tough. All right, here's Connor Welsh with it for Centennial. Gets it over to Nick Vasky. Vasky dribbles in the lane. Pass over in the corner to Welsh. Three-pointer up, no good. Rebound Dowling and Joey Coppola. It's Coppola, Broderick, Frericks, along with Southerd and Allier Agao. Ball in the front court. This is to Nick Frericks, back to Coppola. Marin's trying to run the shot clock down. 18 on the shot clock. Southerd for three in the corner. In and out, no good. And a rebound fought for between Broderick and Shuddy, and Shuddy wins it. Now, Winkle in transition, three-pointer, good. Luke Winkle with 26 points. That is his fourth three of the night. Certainly got to find Luke Winkle. Such a pure shooter. Dowling double-teamed at half court. Frerich gets to Broderick. And in the lane, a shot good by Joe Broderick. Probably his strongest move of the second half. He's got 11. 69-59, Dowling by 10, 2 10 remaining. Winkle again for three, off the back iron, no good. Broderick with the rebound. And for Centennial, not a time to have cold shooting because they've crawled back from a 22-point deficit. Well, if somebody's going to take the shot, you know, Winkle's the guy that you have to help, help uh, uh, get it, get it open, 30-second timeout by the Maroons. Good timeout to, to try to work a, a nice high-percentage shot here. Hey, earlier tonight we recognized the Dowling Catholic High School Activity Spotlight, and congratulations to Isaiah Seymour, Dowling Catholic Class of 24. He wore number 79 on the uh, offense on that right tackle, and he's being recognized. He's a recognized witness to the very best of faith, academics, and student activities. And you can hear Isaiah's interview with John Leonetti on the Catholic Morning Show by visiting Iowa Catholic Radio podcast page at iowacatholicradio.com. I want to thank our Sponsor, Brightside Aesthetics by Ducharmin Dermatology in Clive. 
for their support. BrightsideIowa.com is their website. So congratulations to Isaiah Seymour, the first recognition in the Dowling Catholic Activities Spotlight. Jimmy? Uh, tremendous kid. I've, I've gotten to know Isaiah uh, Seymour over the last two years, and there isn't a more uh, respectful young man than Isaiah Seymour, and uh, congratulations to him. Wonderful yeah. kid. Very well-deserved and nominated. We'll have one each month here on Iowa Catholic Creator. We'll recognize them during our sports broadcast as well as during the morning show. Dowling with the ball out of the timeout. And reaching foul on Winkle, and that'll be his first, believe it or not. Luke's dad, the head men's golf coach at Grandview. Do you ever get any lessons out of him? Does he ever? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I, 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 my daughter dates a, a young man whose dad is a golf guy. I get nothing out of that. Does that tell you something about yourself, maybe a little? I don't, I don't know either. I, got, I have bad equipment. I'm not going to admit I'm a bad golfer. It's the equipment. Chris Winkle, what a class act. He's been at Grandview for many, many years and running a tremendous program. His son's out here. I don't know where he got the basketball skills at. Luke's got skills. I don't think Dad had that. I think Mom must have had it. I'll just do that. <laughs> I'll hear about that later, I'm sure. Puppy. We'll go to the free throw line as he was fouled by Nick Vasky. That's his third. Ryan, nine points tonight. First time at the free throw line. First one no good. It was three of six Tuesday night at the line. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio. Brought to you in part by Klein Electric, Catholic Tuition Organization, and Skeptics Formal Wear. And an alert during our post-game. His second free throw is good along our Central Iowa Sports Network and Iowa Catholic Radio Network stations. But we will go, we'll have a two-minute break. We'll come back and we'll do a one-minute wrap-up for CISN and then we will have an interview, I believe, from the Dowling coaches now. Three-pointer up and no good by Vasky. Rebound Dowling and a foul in the backcourt on Centennial. And they now have five team fouls. So both teams shooting the bonus, shooting two shots rather, the rest of the way, and at the line, all the air, a gal. Here's a young man who has really worked I don't think on the offseason. I don't think there's there's a, a Dowling basketball player that's worked harder to get where he's at right now than Ali Air, uh, all the way through the entire system. Ali Air's first free throw, good. And boy, you see that student body over there. They know the time that he's put in. Ali Air, two points, one rebound the other night against Valley. That's his first free throw of the season. 70 to 59, Dowling by 11. Runes will pull everybody but Broderick off the free throw line. Allier, second free throw. Good. Hard work pays off there. 72 59. Minute 35 to go. Connor Welsh in the front court for Centennial. Corner three by Shuddy, in and out, no good. And rebounded by, well, Allier is battling Joey Coppola, and Coppola comes away and draws a foul. Webb will pick up, or Welsh rather, will pick up his fourth foul. Two free throws coming. The Dowling student section right across from us. Sensing an upset as Centennial was on the Super 10 preseason at number four. And the Jags now a minute 25 away from going down to Dowling. Second free throw by Coppola. Good. Big night out of Joey Coppola, 27 Seven points. points. As he makes them both. Shuddy. And Shuddy for three. Why not? That's his first field goal of the night. He's got five points. And this will be a full timeout. We'll take it with him. Minute 18 to go, fourth quarter here at the Dowling Gym. 74-62, Dowling leading Ankeny Centennial in this boys' contest. Back in one minute on Iowa Catholic Radio and CISN. Iowans are working hard, but high prices make it even harder to keep food on the table. Record numbers need help. Your neighbors, your friends, your community. Stopping hunger starts here. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight.
That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating smack. Ask Joe, why do you often say Westside Auto instead of Westside Auto Pros? Because I think I shouldn't have to tell you we're the pros. That's what you expect. Many places will tell you that they're honest and will fix your car right the first time and that they're friendly. Well, duh, isn't that what you expect? How about this? I'll put my claims in writing. The Westside Auto Lifetime Warranty on any repairs we do. That's an offer no other auto repair shop in this area is doing. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Minute 15 to go here in the fourth quarter. Coach Cataldo. Maroons got off to a great start. They led in that first half by as many as 22 points. Back comes Centennial in the second half, and the Maroons holding on to a 12-point lead with a minute 15 left. Well, a lot, a lot of that came uh, by keeping Luke Winkle at bay uh, in that first half. The Maroons were able to stretch the lead, uh, but uh, Winkle coming alive in the second half has really pushed this game tight at times, uh, down to eight at one point. Southern misses both free throws for Dowling. He's got 15. The other way we go. Three-pointer top of the key by Oki's no good. Gets the rebound. Launches another three. It's no good. And a whistle and a foul on Dowling. And this will be on Maddox Capola, his third. Free throws coming for Centennial. And that's Harrison Jensen in there. The 5'11 senior, number 22 at the line. For two. As both teams over the five-foul limit. So they'll be shooting two free throws on every foul. First one good by Jensen. Again, our thanks to our folks at CISN. Randy Nielsen, our on-site producer. A.J. Laporte and Gavin Epson, our camera operators. Nice job, free throw good by Jefferson. Brady Grimm, our studio producer at Iowa Catholic Radio. Our thanks to Scott Babinat. Sat in. Much refreshing to have his perspective of the girls' game. Brought a different oh, perspective. Sure. Than we had because on Tuesday night. Is, I mean, he's, 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 a, he's like a silent, I don't know what you call it, silent, silent sound. He's, he's so mild-mannered and, and but so knowledgeable about the game and I'm sure he brought so much more than I did. But unlike you, you I admit my shortcomings. Wow. <laughs> Second free throw, both free throws good. 24 points for Coppola. I have many. There's too many to mention. That's why. <laughs> now underneath. Jensen shots no good, rebound Dowling. Final 45 seconds here in the fourth quarter. Kleppi underneath, won't shoot it, and drew the foul on the pass, and he'll go to the line. Fouls on Chase Shetty, and Shetty will be, that'll be his second foul. How about that? Last year, these two teams split and won on each home court. Well, Dowling returns well, the favor. I, 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 think, I think it's the tale of two tapes. I, you look at what Centennial did to the Maroons last year. They shot... They shot over 50% from the field, over 50% from three-point. Really, really crushed the Maroons uh, by double digits in the first game, and uh, that, that's what I think Centennial is getting tonight is some really hot shooting by the Maroons from three. They were at 57% from three through three quarters. Uh, be interesting what they finish at. Again, once this game is finished, we'll take a two-minute break along our network stations and come back with our post-game show. We'll wrap up scoring and statistics. And we'll thank our CISN audience, and we'll have members of the Dowling coaching staff and maybe a player or two on the postgame show. Foul after the missed shot by Centennial. Fouls on Harrison Jensen, his second. Free throws coming for Joe Broderick. Broderick tonight? Well, how does he follow up a 31-point, 17-rebound game Tuesday night? How about 11 points? Of course, you got the rebounds. How many rebounds do you have? I, it's, it's, <laughs> he, I, I, I have him probably for about 11 rebounds, but it's been an extremely frustrate, frustrating, hard-working night for, for Joe Broderick. I thought Centennial's done a great job bringing help defense as, as Joe attacked the basket, uh, which made each, each point uh, really hard to make for Joe. And the second free throw, good. Joe is a perfect 8 for 8 at the free throw line. He's got 13 points tonight. Except for the first one he missed there, I guess. You didn't see that one. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> they had him as, they had it good, so I put it down as good. All right, I'll take your word for it. And Centennial now with a missed shot. Dowling will dribble in the front court. Jackson trying in the lineup, number 23 for Dowling. Ten seconds remaining. Jack Jepson. 
Over to Quincy Moore, number 14 in there. Give it to yes. Coach uh, Justin Ironson with his first win as a Dowling Maroon, and hopefully, hopefully that brings a, a, a lot more in his career here. Final score, Dowling Catholic gets the doubleheader sweep here at the Dowling Gym, 79-64 over the preseason fourth-ranked Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. Ankeny Centennial falls to 1-1. One one. Dowling improves to 1-1 one one with the win. And, yes, the uh, first win for head coach Justin Ironson here at Dowling Catholic, and uh, congratulations to him. All right, we'll take a two-minute break. And the final scores once again in the girls' contest. It was sixth-ranked Dowling Catholic girls defeating second-ranked Ankeny Centennial, 60-34. to In the boys' game, Dowling defeating Centennial, 79-64, along with Jimmy Cataldo. I'm Mark Amadeo, and we'll take a two-minute break and be back with our post-game show following these messages here on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network and CISN. <laughs> 